All right, we're live. Welcome to the First Impressions Podcast. I'm Kristen, and not only am I here with Maggie, hi, but we are here with two very good friends of the podcast, Selvi, hello, and Priya, hey. And we are very excited because today we are doing a very unique and fun episode. It's a very special, a event very special for the episode. <laughs> so Selvi is an accomplished dungeon master, would you say? Game uh, master, game dungeon master. master. Yeah. If you're familiar with Dungeons and Dragons, the game, uh, Selvi runs those games. And so we said, why do a Jane Austen themed game, role playing game? We won't call it Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> we'll call it like, I don't know. What are we calling this? Petty Coats. I was hanky. thinking uh, <laughs> it's based off a pre existing game system called School Days, D A Z E, by Tracy Barnett. Uh, I was thinking we would call it Regency Days. Oh, Regency Days. Okay, I like that. Yeah, so we're really excited. I personally have never played an RPG. Oh, there are RPGs. Yes. Aww. Um, and I think she's Priya, so cute, everyone. <laughs> Priya is in the same boat. And Priya, because she has a cold, is joining us via Hangouts on Air. So, um, yeah, so this is awesome that we were all four able to get together. And, and I am in the same room. Yay, as Kristen and Maggie. Maggie together again. <laughs> I know our listeners are like, think, okay, but you guys are always together. We're together like every month. No, it's true. I'm I'm in D.C. for conference. And so I had to see my peeps, talk a little J.A., <laughs> talking J.A. We, we, <laughs> we, try to, uh, we try to schedule the recordings when we are together because it makes it easier. I just can't even with that joke. It's just like... <laughs> You just got to play it where it lies, I guess. Uh, Okay, so let's kick things over to Selby, our GM for today, our game master. And she will fill you guys in on the background of what's going on with the story we're going to tell. So like I said, we're basing this off a pre-existing role-playing game called School Days. Uh, School Days is really about um, telling stories set in high school. So if you had a really great time in high school or a really terrible time Mm -hmm. in high school, uh, it's a a chance to rewrite history a little bit. Um, I like it a lot because it is very good for a more what we call rules light system. There There aren't a lot of rules to memorize. It's not really heavy on like dice rolling. There's a little bit, but just enough. We don't need maps. You don't need uh, anything like miniatures, it's all theater of the mind. <laughs> and uh, additionally, it works really well for in-genre storytelling. Uh, it works best when all of the players and the game master have a shared reference point to work with. Obviously, it's based uh, in the shared reference point of high school, but you can easily adapt it to a shared TV series, uh, favorite kind of book, like the Jane Austen book. <laughs> Possibly your favorite author. Possibly your favorite author, or uh, a movie, or what have you. So, uh, they use Buffy a lot as an example, mm-hmm. and to kind of like give you an idea of like all the different characters you could have and interactions. But you don't have to slay monsters if you don't. Yeah, mind. I have actually run a Buffy themed school days RPG. I oh, bet that was fun. Oh my god, I would put Anya. Anya. Uh, yes, good. <laughs> And you can play it with people who've never played RPGs before. So I thought it would be perfect for my friends who are newbies. Maggie, of course, is an old hand at RPGs. <laughs> Nerd. Well, <self-ed. laughs> That's a little me, joke. Miss, <laughs> Miss Maggie, I've been thinking about creating a Jane Austen podcast. Like, <laughs> your house is completely mailed. It was a little joke. It, I, it was a little joke. <laughs> right. yeah. You're no, right. but Selby and I have, um, she has been running a and d um, adventure that I've been in now eight years now or something like that. So, but I don't have a lot. I have no experience with this system. Uh, so why don't we start with a little bit of story setup? Um, so the information I sent ahead of time to all the players was this. Every year, Lady Kensington bends to the social pressures conveyed by her status and fortune to host a ball at her rambling estate, Trowbridge. This is near the town of Heathford. However, she has no daughters to assist her, and this year, her failing health leaves her unequal to the task. You are a group of young ladies from good families, invited to spend a few weeks this spring at Trowbridge, 
and to help Lady Kensington plan and host the ball. Uh, and then we had some character creation um, for people who are not familiar with school days. I'll go briefly into this. Um, with school days, the idea is that you have kind of a specialty as a student, or in this case, uh, a Regency uh, young lady. Uh, and in our Regency days, we're calling that an accomplishment. Is it dancing, etiquette, fine dining, etc.? So you have a kind of thing that you are the best at. And then you also have a couple of traits, personality quirks. Um, sometimes they're good things and sometimes they are bad things. They can either give you a plus in certain situations or minus in situations. So for example, maybe you are a soft-spoken lady. And the good thing is when you don't want to be noticed, you're invisible. But the bad thing is when you want to be noticed, nobody cares, right? Aww. So there's two sides to every trait. And these things, your accomplishments and your traits will affect uh, how successful you are at any given task. Uh, so let's say you are accomplished in drawing, but you are soft-spoken. So you have this painting. If you have secretly painted the object of your affection and you don't want anyone to see, the fact that you are soft-spoken is going to be helpful for you. But if you wanted to subtly hint to him that, oh, I'm drawing you because you're so handsome and wonderful and I want to have your babies, uh, <laughs> he will not notice you at all because you're so soft-spoken. So that's to kind of give you a little bit of flavor of what the of what the role play will be like. Everyone at the table beforehand uh, picked a motivation, like their main goal for accomplishing this shared project, which is the ball. Uh, we established some relationships, giving people some depth by giving them connections to what we call non-player characters or NPCs in the world. So who are your people? Do you have a special gentleman friend? That kind of thing. Um, additionally, with school days, uh, you might get some pluses or minuses that are situational. Uh, you might have, in school days, it's called a gold star. In Regency, we're calling it the graces. Uh, you might have one little point that you can spend to increase your increase your success on any given task. Or you might have an embarrassment and a consequence. Um, consequence, yeah. that's right. So in school days, they're called consequences. They can be physical, social, or mental consequences of failing at something. In Regency days, it's an embarrassment. You know, you might have a physical, social, or mental embarrassment that will either eventually go away or you can do something to get rid of it. I'm pretty sure I'm going to rack those up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's good to get those things because it means you're you're taking risks and you're role playing and you're 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 doing your best. Uh, so next, I'm going to start by setting up the opening scene. I'm going to so, have another scone. Yes. Selby <laughs> made a scone. Selby made amazing snacks, cucumber <laughs> sandwiches. Sorry, Priya. <laughs> <laughs> Off-site. <laughs> Lady Kensington's ball is less than a week away, and there's so much to do. Menus must be settled and decorations organized, music selected and gowns altered, and we mustn't forget the invitations. The lady of the house is doing her best to oversee, oversee things, but her poor health confines her to bed most of the day. Uh, scene one. <laughs> uh, today, Lady Kensington has made a rare appearance at tea time to welcome you all to her home. Oh, how refreshing it is to me to look around and see so many lovely young faces. Allow me to make some introductions. Uh, and this is where I'm going to ask each of our players to introduce your characters from the perspective of Lady Kensington. So in other words, You'd probably at this point only share the details that would be known to a new in, new acquaintance. Polite society. Polite society. Uh, and if there's anything else you want for other players to know about your character, try to embody it as the scene unfolds, right? Um, and you will get extra points, good graces for really embodying all aspects of your character. Uh, and also feel free to add anything to the scene that is reasonable to expect at a Regency tea time, like furniture, refreshments, staff, scenery, all that's uh, good to go. 
I will actually start by introducing a non-player character to give you a little bit of flavor of what I, I thought would be uh, appropriate. May I present Miss Ashworth, a new arrival to our little neighborhood. <laughs> I understand that she is quite an accomplished artist. No doubt we can depend on her refined sensibilities in crafting the invitations and decorating for the ball. I hope these festivities will help you feel most welcome here at Heathford. Uh, you observe that Miss Ashworth is a woman of no great beauty. <laughs> oh, dang. <laughs> My countenance is pale. <laughs> but what looks she has have been shown to best effect by careful and expensive sartorial choices. Okay. <laughs> well, um, careful and sartorial choices. <clears throat> so this is Kristen. I will go and pretend to be Lady Kensington and introduce my character. So this is my niece, Miss Calliope Sandright. She is the eldest daughter of my brother, who is currently the clergyman on the Heathford, the Heathford estate. Um, oh, and, the estate is Trowbridge. Sorry. Okay. On the Trowbridge estate. On the Trowbridge estate. Um, Calliope, my dear niece, uh, is very accomplished at music. All the instruments, pianoforte, the harp, everything you would expect. She's quite a songbird. <laughs> and this charming young woman will probably capture your imagination. And <laughs> yeah. Excellent, excellent. <laughs> oh, and I see sitting across from me, this is Maggie. <laughs> And Miss Anne Popplewell, it's so nice to have you back in the neighborhood from your recent schooling. It's been so long since I've seen your face, dear. Here, please hand Miss Popplewell those lemon cakes. Those are her favorite, if I remember, from when she was a girl. She was often here on the estate playing about the grounds with my youngest, uh, my middle son, Lawrence. Uh, I've heard that you've become quite accomplished in dancing. And I look forward to seeing your skills on display at the ball, dear. And please give my best to your parents. I haven't seen them as much as I'd like to in the neighborhood, uh, but I'm, they're very dear to me. We've been friends for a long time. Priya? And, and sitting next to her is Constancia Gate, who is the ward of our old family friend, Lord Sir Englebrook. Um, I have saved some very special books for her because she's a great reader and known for her choice and taste in, in literature. But I have not seen her in a very long time, so I'm grateful for her to be coming here to help us uh, plan this ball. Uh, at this time, uh, Miss Ashworth uh, pipes up for the first time. Oh, I'm only too <laughs> delighted to be here. Thank you so much for having me, Lady Kensington. Oh if I may, a little question. If there are any purchases to be made, I would greatly appreciate a male chaperone. I know some modern ladies are very confident to go about town on their own, but I know I would feel much more comfortable if, say, your, your eldest son were to accompany us. And she punctuates this request by taking a demure sip of tea. <laughs> uh, Lady Kensington and Miss Ashworth engage in some conversation to the side. Do you all wish to add anything to the scene? Miss Popwell, do you have a response to this brazen? Uh... <laughs> Miss Sanright, I don't think I've ever heard a voice quite that shrill, except when I've been out on my country walks. <laughs> She does sound like a very posh fishmonger or something. Like that. <laughs> of course, this is said in an undertone. Yes. Yeah, so, 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 okay. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. Um, I think she got her voice from when a mysterious stranger scared her around the side of the room the other day. Oh, I see that you must be a great fan of novel reading. <laughs> oh, especially the ones where doom and gloom are around the corner. <laughs> Are you a fan of Mrs. Radcliffe's novel? Very much so. <laughs> uh, 
I hope I'm not being too forward, ladies, but I think the three of us will have some excellent conversations while we're planning this ball. Yes, indeed. Although it might be more entertaining for everyone involved if we were to have some conflicts of some type. <laughs> <laughs> I was just setting the stage and then we're going to have that later, Kristen. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Meg. Now we have uh, where we just your last name, please, because I don't think it would be appropriate for me to refer to you as Constancia yet. Oh, oh, oh Gate, G A T E. All right. Once everyone has been properly introduced, Lady Kensington clears her throat meaningfully. <clears throat> it is a small but authoritative noise, and you find your attention riveted to, riveted to the older woman. My young friends, as you know, my health is not what it used to be. Now, now, no need to look so glum. My doctor has assured me that this rest cure will help me back on my feet in time for our annual festivities. However, I will not be able to play an active part in the planning of the ball this year. I am entrusting the task to the four of you. As ladies of good standing and excellent families, I know that the preparations are in good hands. With that, she signals to her maid, who gently helps her back to her chambers to rest. Uh... Lady Kensington has not given you any specific instructions. <laughs> um, you, after all, though, you are ladies of good society, and you've been to many balls yourselves. Perhaps you even helped your family host a ball in the past. Think and agree among yourselves what elements are essential, okay? what elements are important but secondary, and what will you only attempt if you have spare time. In game terms, I'm asking you to set your own kind of win conditions, what you want to accomplish as a team. Uh, keep in mind that you have less than a week to work with. The higher the task priority, the longer it will take to get it right. Right. So you can't have everything be essential and get it all accomplished. Yeah. Right. Um, and if you're not happy with your performance of a, a particular task, you can always try again, say, the next day if you have enough time. So uh, I, Miss Calliope Sandwright, Sandwright um, am a great fan of music. And so if you ladies do not object, I would be uh, quite willing to interview the musicians in town, age, perhaps a fiddle player, a bassoon, uh, the typical accoutrement and instruments, a, fl a flute, a uh, flautist, no. <laughs> um, I myself am quite an accomplished harpist, harpist, but you know, I would never be playing at this ball because I am an attendee. So I should interview other people uh, in order to get some music. I think that's a wonderful idea, Miss Sandright. I hope that we can all agree that our number one priority should be securing music and focusing on the dancing. It is, after all, a ball. After all. We only have a week, and I think that the music should definitely be our priority. I would, however, like to accompany you to interview any musicians, because dancing, I believe, is the highest priority, and I want to ensure that any musicians we select know all the latest and most appropriate Airs. dances. Airs and, and country dances. Yes. Yes, Miss Popwell, and shall I also suggest that as Lady Kensington has not given us any instruction as to the layout of how many couple we can accommodate in her ballroom, or whether we must dance through the passageway and where the hot supper shall be laid out. <laughs> yeah, I read Emma. <laughs> <laughs> A few times. Um. I would say that I have no interest in the music whatsoever, but the hot supper particularly inter interests me because we never know when someone might try a nefarious thing and, and try and mess up the dinner for everyone. So I'd like to keep an eye on the food and come up <laughs> with with the menu. Um, I have this friend- food are the most essential <laughs> qualities of any good ball. Yes, a ball yes. without a hot supper is an impingement on the rights of man. And victuals <laughs> and, <drinks. laughs> and drinks are essential to keep your energy up. Yes, you your strength. That's right. The strength of the, the couple. Uh, yes, but dear, let's remember, we are planning a ball, not the Norman invasion. <laughs> well, Miss Gate seemed to have a concern about possibly 
being poisoned by the hot supper? Is that my understanding? Well, in some of the novels I have read, that is what <laughs> some <laughs> Food safety is a concern. I think we can all agree. <laughs> with Lady Kensington's ill health, we would not want any sort of scandal to arise <laughs> in the neighborhood. That's true. Uh, Miss Gate, I think that we'd all be happy for you to take charge on ensuring there's no poison <laughs> in the food. At this ball. <laughs> As Perhaps you could taste test everything. <laughs> I'm about to make an aside to Miss Puffwell. <laughs> As a side. Uh, Miss, Miss Ashworth pipes in and says, oh, yes. Oh, yes. Food is most important. Oh, I just think everything will be just so splendid. Oh, and I will be happy to do whatever you all request of me. Mm. Thank you, Miss Ashworth. I don't think we'll be requiring your additional well, service. Well, uh, I think, uh, Miss Ashworth, did, did not Lady Kensington say that art was your specialty? Oh, yes. Would you like to see my portfolio? You know, I, I think that I, uh, Miss Lady Kensington is such an arbiter of taste. I think that her recommendation of you is all I really need to hear. Perhaps you could work on designing the invitations, which need to go out as soon as possible. Perhaps you could go into the other room uh, <laughs> to take inspiration true. from some of and, the art around the estate. And then, and as all three of us are from the neighborhood, we will help provide the guest list. Oh, yes. Excellent. Right. Excellent plan. Uh, Capital. With, with a titter, Miss Ashworth. <laughs> Uh, goes off to find uh, necessary uh, writing implements. So are you all saying that you are not going to use the NPC Miss Ashworth at all in accomplishing your main goal? No, we will. She's just annoying. <laughs> <laughs> but right now, you're sending her off to do invitations. Does that mean that invitations are one of your high priorities? They are not a high priority. I, I had written down that basically music um, and food. Are okay. the two high priorities. And then where do um, invitations fall on that list? I think invitations would be a secondary. I mean, they do need to go out ASAP. Mm -hmm. But in terms of what they are, I, do, I my character definitely does believe if Lady Kensington says she's great at art, like, fine, let her do the invitations. Mm -hmm. And then we'll get those out. Yeah. I could yell after her, like, oh, uh, Miss Ashworth, do you think perhaps you could get those done by the end of today? Uh, so they'd be ready for... A high-pitched titter rings through the hallway. <laughs> Does that mean yes? Miss <laughs> <laughs> Ashford came with the time. It's just for lack of planning. <laughs> <laughs> Constituted emergency. All right, we're, we'll check in with you later, Miss Ashford. Miss Ashford. Oh, okay. <laughs> Um, those need to go out in the morning post. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes, I completely agree. And uh, who will be procuring the shoe roses? <laughs> <laughs> that might be a question best asked of Mr. Collins, the butler. Oh, the butler. I believe he's still the butler here. As, as Lady Kensington mentioned, <laughs> I spent a great deal of time here in my youth and so know the household staff. So perhaps that might be a question we could direct towards... Uh, Mr. Collins, the butler, or the housekeeper. I what trust. What are shoe roses? Uh, okay, so you're Kristen, just going to do that the whole time, you? <laughs> in Pride and Prejudice, they're preparing for the ball at Netherfield, and it says the very shoe roses for Netherfield were got by proxy because it is raining, and shoe roses are little ribbon ro like um, fabric roses that you put on your shoe to decorate it. That is a shoe rose. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> no, I just brought it up because it's a concern and Pride and Prejudice, and I thought our listeners would appreciate it. <laughs> would you like to put decorations on your list of priorities? Yeah, I think that should be another priority, though, right? Won't the, would the housekeeper be able to procure some floral So That's what I was trying to get at. If you are not going to be directly involved in, the, in obtaining these things, then they're not priorities. Okay. No, I think that like we do need to be involved in approving, but I think delegation, here I'll do this in character. Um, clearly with so little time, time is of the essence and ours is of great import. So perhaps we could delegate certain tasks to household staff and ask them to present us with several options from which we eat. Very wise. I would be very satisfied with that. Uh, I gesture to one of the attendants. Uh, could you please ask Mr. Collins or perhaps the housekeeper to join us at their earliest convenience? With a curtsy, she go, leaves the room. 
Cool. Aside. <laughs> so uh, this having been decided, ladies, uh, shall I sally forth into the town to make inquiries about local musicians? Oh, uh, is that what's going to happen? <laughs> do, we, do we want to split the party at this okay. point? So a couple things to keep in mind. You have established that you have two essential tasks, music and menu. You have established that you have two secondary tasks, imitations and decorations. Is that all the tasks you all want to be directly involved with? It seems like a lot of tasks. Yeah. I think that the other things, the household at this point swing, like we don't need to be involved in where people park their carriages. You know, like that's yeah, yeah. something that mm -hmm. the uh, household staff can concern themselves with. Uh, Priya, mm -hmm. can you think of anything else that we're missing that would be big for a ball? Uh, no, not at all. What about your own outfit? That's what I was thinking. That's something, I mean, that's like mm, oh, yeah. one of my priority. Well, well, perhaps maybe we should ask the local dressmaker to come to the estate to help us think through what our outfits shall be. Or we could stop in if we if we all go to town together. I uh, think it's a little early for us to split up, like have me and yeah. Kristen's characters go off yeah. and leave you here. The path okay. should all sally yes. forth into the town. Oh, no. yeah. yeah. How many families are we talking about, Kristen? Do you well, think? Lady, I think have you just uh, GM? Do you know how large a uh, town we're talking about here? Twelve or fourteen couple, I suspect, could fit. <laughs> right. I would like to make sure that my special friend Lord Algernon Denmi arrives as well is invited as well. So we should tell Miss Ashworth to include him in the invitation. Perhaps we need to go speak to Miss Ashworth and let her know how many invitations we need and ensure that they are properly addressed. Miss Gates, are you entirely certain that Miss is good, polite society? I believe I have heard, and I hope you don't mind me saying so, that some ladies have found him unnecessarily. Uh, sorry. Okay, so <laughs> I am, you, this is a direct confrontation of what she just said. So I am going to make you roll something Okay. for that. Okay, so tell me about your traits. How how did you say this? Were, <laughs> were you tactful? Were you soft-spoken? Like, what is the... Well, so one of my traits is compassion. And what I was trying to do was give her an opening to say, no, I don't want Mr. Denby to come. You're right, because... I have heard a rumor that he is unnecessarily meddling in her affairs. Nice. Okay. So roll a D6 and add one for compassionate. Priya, how do you react to this? Do you have a trait that uh, oh, comes dang. into play? I, I'm very forthright. Okay. Yeah. So, so I will be offended, but yet be offended yet honest and say, some may believe that Mr. Denby is too involved in my affairs, but he has been kind and generous with me when I have had no friends. And he has supported me in my, in my endeavors for a brighter future. So I would l like to have his support at this ball. Okay, so roll a d6 and add one for your forthrightness. Kristen had a hella good roll. I mean, I don't know what that means, really. I have a two. Okay. And then you added one, did you roll a one and add? No, no, I rolled a two. Okay, so you got a score of three. three. Unfortunately, Kristen got a score of seven. <laughs> so she is the one who gets to dictate the outcome of this social interaction. Okay. Um, whether or not Lord Denby is explicitly invited to the ball. He might still show up because he's kind of a creeper, but in this particular situation, uh, the win goes to Kristen. However, I feel like you both like embodied your character very fully in that interaction. So I am going to say that puts you one step closer to getting a grace point, Priya. Okay. So if you have one more failure or if you if you activate the negative side of a trait, I'm going to give you a grace point to work with. Okay. Okay. So uh, can I? Yes. Oh, Lord Dundee, I don't think I'm familiar with him. I have been gone from the neighborhood for a while. Tell me, Miss Gate, is he a handsome gentleman? He is, he is handsome for a particular taste. His nose is, is narrow with, with a smile that is slightly weaselish. But it, <laughs> it adds, adds an air of mystery to his demeanor. 
that allows that that draws me to him and allows me to listen to him when he suggests and makes recommendations for for things I should do. Oh, interesting. Well, I'm I'm not interested in looking at his face for the rest of my life, but it might be diverting <laughs> for the ball to spend some time with him. Yes. I apologize, Miss Gate, uh, if I have caused any offense, but my compassionate nature led me to make such an inquiry for your own comfort. Uh, and so I will graciously allow you to decide whether we invite Mr. Dinner. Why, thank you, Miss Sandright. I am, this is all too, all too much kindness. <laughs> well, no one asked my opinion. Oh, yes. tell you when. <laughs> please, please, Miss Popwell. I said Look. the more gentlemen, the better. What's a ball without gentlemen? Isn't that the point of attending yeah. a ball? Well, so yeah. Let's, perhaps we should call Miss Ashworth back in and tell her. Oh, oh God, no. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> I will go <laughs> and ask her to come back. <laughs> Miss Ashworth? Miss Ashworth? Yes, yes, dear, please put the marble bust down. <laughs> Miss Ashworth, would, would you please mind joining us back in the tea room? We have some, yes. Yeah, Yes, oh, oh, don't worry about that, dear. It'll wash. All right, thank you. <laughs> Hello again, my good friends. Yes. I just feel we're all going to be bosom buddies from now on. Yes, Miss Ashford. So we wanted to discuss some details of the invitations with you, perhaps how many, and to make sure you included certain people in them. Oh, I never found any paper. <laughs> all right. Um, why, well, here's a sheath right here. <laughs> here's a napkin. <laughs> um, perhaps it would be best, Miss Ashworth, if we uh, employed someone who could perhaps scribe for you or act as a, a clerical position, perhaps some of the household staff where you could. Well, I actually ran into Lord Elias in the oh, hallway right. and he, he offered to give his assistance to us poor women. <laughs> well, I'll just go and fetch him, shall I? Okay, that would be what, yes, I, I She's would gone. love to see Elias again. Yes, all right. Great. Sure. So I take a very determined Dip of tea to strengthen <laughs> my resolve. Is there a role for resolve strengthening <laughs> that needs to happen? No, uh, Miss Papuel, tell me, during your childhood, were you friends uh, with Elias or was it the younger son, Lawrence, that you were most connected to? Oh, well, I did interact with Elias, but Lawrence and I were dear, dear friends. We spent every day running around this estate. I think I know every inch of it, like the back of my hand. In fact, uh, we've lost touch, and I was never as close to Elias, but I'm looking forward to the to planning for the ball, for the chance to reconnect with the family. A determined stride comes down the hallway. <laughs> clump, 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 clump. The door is flung open with a little bit more force than is necessary. Mm -hmm. And in strides a tall and brooding figure. You, Anne, recognize him immediately and uh, probably Calliope as well since you're in the neighborhood. This is Elias Kensington. Okay. Uh, he has under his arm what appears to be a, a ledger. Uh, with some loose papers protruding from it. He's clearly have been hard at work when Miss Ashworth, Ashworth, excuse me, pulled him into the room. And he says, oh, what is all this business about a ball, eh? <laughs> you young ladies are here just to squander uh, my family's fortune. And I plan to keep a close eye on all of you as you do it. <clears throat> I stand up from the table, dip a curtsy, Elias, it is so nice to see you again. I see that you are very much as you always were and in good health. We are so looking forward to your help with the ball planning. The annual ball your mother has every year. It's just it's nonsense and waste of time, if you ask me. What, what, what do you need? This, this one was talking about you need some supplies. Um, Constantia. Uh, is standing when Elias walks into the room. She moves quietly into the corner and peers at him under her eyelashes. There's something almost roguish about his look. And she sees a similarity of 
of personality to her own, which makes her suspicious. But she hears Elias's question, and she says, Late Miss Ashworth cannot seem to find any paper. Do you have paper for us to use to send the invitations? Oh, yes, I suppose. <laughs> All right. And he he goes over to a desk and kind of rifles through one handed and he pulls out oh, this some parchment. Oh, will this do? It's pretty basic paper. It's nothing <laughs> special. It's nothing fancy that that you might. Yeah, oh, that's right. not nice cardstock. It's just writing paper. What I believe uh, Miss Gate intends to ask is whether you have any pretty little hot pressed paper upon which an invitation might be sent. Uh, so you are proposing mm -hmm. that he part with some kind, some resources, yes. right? Um, so he's I evidently a bit of a skin flint. I'm going to ask one of you to roll to try to convince him. So Look at your traits and think who might be the best at um, uh, at this task. Well, it says I'm charming, which means I'm excellent in interactions with members of the opposite sex. I, th I think that's good. You think that's good? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. But the bad thing is that I can't resist flirting, even when it's detrimental. <laughs> oh, Miss. So, <laughs> do you want me to say something and then roll? Uh, yeah. Just go ahead and okay. let it loose. Um. I walk over to him where he's standing by the desk. Elias, now I'm sure you know that that's a ball. Won't you please be a dear and work with Miss Ashworth to help patients? It would be so nice to have someone who is so strong-willed as you to help. Now, I feel like I can take these liberties because I've known him like 20 years. Yes, right. Since yeah, he was yeah. a child. Like, I'm not going to call him Lord Ashworth because yeah. his head's big enough already. <laughs> So that's a three on the die, but I get a plus one for the good side of my trait. So mm -hmm. it's a four. Okay. So in this game, I believe fours are a success. So uh, he his demeanor softens somewhat as he recognizes, you know, a childhood friend and acquaintance. Maybe not his best friend. Maybe not friend. <laughs> And he realizes that he is acting in a boorish manner. Your charming personality has highlighted his own four uh, actions. So uh, reluctantly, he says, oh, I'm sure there are some bits and bubbles left over from previous years. And I will be sure uh, to alert Mr. Collins and have them locate those for you. Oh, and if you could please work with Miss Ash, ensure that all the proper families invited, and uh, we will provide you now quickly a list of those who we wish to make sure receive an invitation. Ladies, does that sound appropriate? Yes. And yes. we just like quickly right. scribble out names that we'd like, including um, Lord Denby, exactly, and then whoever um, the two of us might want to invite. I think the person I want to see is his brother, <clears throat> so he'll be there, of course. Yeah. Now, ladies, I want to consult you. Is so, he still there? He is he's still, still there. Okay. Once he's gone. Okay. When, well, once he's gone, I go, well, that's the two of Whoa. them dealt with. <laughs> so uh, okay. he accepts your scribbled list and uh, looks a bit askance at Miss Ashward, you know, <laughs> bopping along beside him in her perky way. Uh, he, he turns to go and at the last moment, he recalls himself, turns around, gives a proper bow and turns on his heel and his leaves. As he whips around, a piece of paper comes mm. out of his ledger, but he's walked away too quickly for, for you all to call him back. You pick up the piece of paper, and it's she. <gasps> oh, look at this. He must have fallen out. Well, well, we'll return it to him. But look at Miss Sandright. Perhaps you would, I see a piece of music here. Perhaps you would. Why, this is a beautiful Italian love song. Oh. I would translate the words for you, but there's no making sense of Italian love song. <laughs> <laughs> we all pause to contemplate how ridiculous the Italians are. Good. All right. So that is Miss Ashworth. And, and I'll say that that, you know, well, we can circle back on the invitations later, but that's 
That's yeah. the invitation right. sorted. Right. Just in case that wasn't clear, I my character obviously does not like Miss Ashworth, and I find Elias to be totally not fun and pompous and gruff. So I feel like I've I've done a victory by getting the two of them <laughs> off together. It's like yes. <laughs> oh, agreed, Miss Popwell. Oh, yes. <laughs> As loath as I am to say anything negative about another of uh, the, the fairer sex, I must admit that Miss Ashworth Benny is not entirely. Miss mm-hmm. Gate, wouldn't you agree? I believe that I must be honest in my response. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that her, ears, her ears besmirch the very ground that I walk on. <laughs> Perhaps, Miss Gate, she would be the villain in one of your great novels that you read. Actually, I believe that trusting her with such things as the invitation provides an opening for some nefarious deeds. But with Elias there, I believe that truth shall prevail. I'm I'm not sure she has the intelligence for any nefarious deeds, but (laughs) my hope was that Lord Ashworth will be, uh, sorry, Lord Kensington will be able to assist her and perhaps lend some common seedings. Yes. Much needed common sense. I would like to get to know Lord Kensington a little bit better, so I am happy to go and check on their progress at a later date. So I will say that your your planning has, uh, has taken you well past tea time. It's almost time to dress for dinner. The, the day is wrapping up. Oh, no. Right? Um, but you will have ample opportunity to uh, to restart for the full day bright and early tomorrow. What's the Regency equivalent of telling someone, yeah, good luck with that? Because that's how I was like my response to getting to know Elias better. It's like, okay, good luck. I don't know what the Regency equivalent is. I wish you Godspeed. <laughs> Right. Does anybody want to play out any kind of scene in dinner or in the morning um, or overnight? I think I should perhaps, when we are seated at dinner, mm-hmm. I am next to Calliope Sandright, and I take this opportunity while everyone's conversing to ask her about her aunt and how, when she and Lord Kensington, the late Lord Kensington, got married and, and what was their demeanor prior? How long have they known each other prior? To getting married. Do you know any of their history? Well, from hearing my father, uh, Miss Gate, talk about their courtship, from what I understand, there were some stormy periods uh, where there were several lovers' quarrels. And I know that they were parted for quite a while. In fact, I believe my dear aunt, Lady Kenton, went overseas and spent some time in the south of France, a little more than nine months, I believe. Thank you. <laughs> I hold my breath and, and release the air slowly. Perhaps this is the information I had dreamed of. Thank you, Miss Sandright. I did not want to betray my interest in such a subject, but because my uncle, Sir Englebrook, is such an old friend, sometimes he is loath to tell me about their friendship and how it began. And so this information is great interest. I believe he met Lady Kensington and Lord Kensington after their reconciliation. Yes, it's quite possible. I know that uh, my aunt made many friends at that time of her life. She was quite this. <laughs> she was quite the great. She graced every dinner party from here to London. A wink. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to. Uh, sorry, Priya, were you going to respond to that? Or are you good? No. no. I'm good. I'd like to role play um, seeing my childhood friend again. Like that's what I'm most excited about yeah. is a chance to reconnect with. Uh, uh, so minutes Lawrence. before uh, dinner is due to start, a slightly disheveled young man who's clearly not uh, had the time to change from his riding clothes rushes into the dining hall, uh, all helter skelter, and and bows quickly to his mother and takes a seat at the table and apologizes for being. He doesn't see you at first. Okay, am I seated? Let's say I'm seated like maybe across but to the left. Sure. Okay. So at a opportune time, so I don't want to be t- very rude, but I lean in and say, Lawrence, it's so lovely to see you again. I know it's been so long. Miss Sandright looks slightly shocked at the use of Christian names. Oh, get over, <laughs> get over, oh, um, should I do a roll to see if I note? Are you trying to make it noticed or are you trying to make it unnoticed? 
I'm not trying either way. Okay, so I don't okay. think she's trying to hide it. So but my character, like, she sees this as completely proper because she grew up, mm-hmm. right. um, and she she cares, but she kind of doesn't care that much. Um, <laughs> like, just like Maggie. I'm sorry. Yeah. So what what was his response? Sorry. Uh, so are you trying to be charming? Are you trying to do anything? Or um, I'm. I mean, I'm just. What like, is your an, other trait besides charming? Um, amiable and excellent friend. Okay. I think that you are going to have to roll it a minus because Lawrence, while you are friends, he does find the use of his Christian name in this mixed society and just like belting out over dinner a little bit too amiable, a little bit too friendly. So maybe he's gotten a little over there. Yeah. So so also the the negative of amiable is I often tell embarrassing stories about others. So (laughs) it's possible he's also like, oh crap, this chick who I've known since I was a little kid. Right. Well, he's already embarrassed at being late too. So this is like on top of it. He's like, oh my God, I have to. Oh dang, a six. So I rolled a five. So even though you are uh, a little bit too too friendly, too amiable. Mm-hmm. Lawrence recognizes you and he responds with a warm smile and he says, oh, is it really Anne Popowell? Mm-hmm. How how long has it been? And is very friendly in his response as well. Oh, it's been at least three years, at least, I should imagine. I'm so happy to see you here. I was one of the reasons why I was looking forward to planning the ball is the chance to see you again. It's been so long since we both went to school. Three years, three years. I hardly recognize you at all. (laughs) (laughs) She looks down and is like, well, I suppose some things have changed. (laughs) (laughs) Miss Sandright sneaks a side glance at (laughs) Anne Popwell's bosom. (laughs) Uh, I don't think I need to roll the tongue. <laughs> if you thought I would play a character with anything less than fantastic, but okay, um, wow. Lawrence slowly turns redder and redder and applies himself directly to his food. <laughs> well, I do. Perhaps this is not the uh, most perfect opportunity for us to catch up, but I hope that such an opportunity. Will. He looks up at you and, and nods a little bit, but then turns to his right-hand companion and starts up a conversation. So maybe there's there's another opportunity for a role here because I I am greeting him with like the warmest of friendship, but not like, hey, like I'm not looking to land him or anything like that. Now, maybe my family might disagree, but I'm just like, hey, it's been so long since we saw each other. Let's catch up kind of thing. Um, you can help. You'll have other opportunities to interact with Lawrence. Okay, I'm just like he might interpret me. Yes, he might. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So uh, dinner uh, concludes with the usual. Oh, sorry. Can I? Am I sitting close enough to Anne and Constantia to be able to ask them a private question? Uh, not at the moment, but when the men retire to oh, just smoke their cigars. Yeah, take take, their, s- take snuff. Yeah, they're taking their snuff. They're drinking their brandy. And you're like, man, I wish I could join them. But no, I'm going to yeah. go over to the library. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Question yeah. To ask it. So, so after dinner, we were tied to the library for a few moments. You will all need to go to bed soon, though, because there's much work to do in the morning. Okay. Uh, so, ladies, I wish to be um, on a matter of some delicacy. My dear friend, James Fraser, who is the curate of the parish, very much wishes to join me at this ball. There are some personal reasons that I cannot disclose why he would like to dance with me at a ball one last time. And I could hardly refuse him when he looked at me. Uh, Would the inclusion of a low lyric be noticed and marked amongst the many people? Oh, I think that the more the merrier. (laughs) Dancing is after all the great equalizer. We are all the same while dancing, are we not? And if this gentleman is willing to dance with perhaps you and others, I say by all means include him in the invitation. He could be mistaken for a gentleman anywhere. He is well read and carries himself like a And and I would agree, after all, your father, the clergyman, and his, and your mother are also coming. So it is only natural to also invite the curate. Will will your brother uh, I did not notice that you put your brother down on the invitation. 
Oh, uh, oh, uh, Miss Gate. Oh, um, <clears throat> displaying some discomfort. I must admit that my brother is far too busy at present in London pursuing uh, some literary pursuits to yeah. join. Literary oh, pursuits? Scandalous! <laughs> <laughs> oh, hi, Miss Ashworth. There you <laughs> She's <laughs> always here. <laughs> as an aside, Miss Popwell looks I don't remember your brother being that interested in literary pursuits, but perhaps much has changed. What? Well, how can we have a curate at the ball? <laughs> so, oh, you're back on the curate. Yeah. <laughs> Should I roll? He's a little slow. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah I think you're going to have to like convince her to keep her mouth shut because she's the invitation. Oh, that's right. Oh, did you say it's a scandal because she knows? Wait, no, the curate. Oh, right. Okay. She doesn't know about Okay, so she just thinks it's he's too lowly in rank to attend. Oh yeah, she's a big. Are we rolling or are we? I think Kristen's. Gonna I'm gonna roll. have to roll yeah. to see if the curate can come. I mean, we outnumber this bitch. So. But she is the one who's literally writing the invitation. Well, That's as true. as uh, as our game master said, he could always still show up. It's just whether he gets the formal invitation. That's true. And B. Like she's writing on the invitation, but you could probably like <laughs> slip one, yeah. in. one in. So like, there are many different ways to overcome Ooh, this. I have an idea, loss. but do you want to go ahead and do it? Oh no, what are you saying? I, well, I have the idea that I could um, pipe up for my new friends, Miss mm -hmm. Ashworth. I think that Lord Kensington would be very disappointed to learn that we were excluding someone who was a dear friend of one of the neighborhood families. It is not a question, but I believe. <laughs> It's one of the questions what people think when they see him there. Of course, they'll know him. He's from the neighborhood. Yes, but don't you think that Lord Kensington would be glad to have a fellow gentleman? I attendance? do not. <laughs> I tried. I know she likes it, isn't so it, I was trying to like convince Lord, her. Isn't Lord Kensington dead? Or is he still No, well, Elias is still oh, Elias. Oh, oh, yeah. So, and she clearly is interested in him, right? Right. So I thought maybe if I could get her on the journey, like he'd oh, want him yes. to be there. Okay. But mm. apparently that's not getting through. So Well, you could roll. I mean, do you okay. Would this be an amiable plus one or charming is more for members of the opposite sex? Amiable could be a plus because Miss Ashworth could just feel that this is being asked in friendship rather than to offend. Yeah. Well, I tried to link it to her, probably her main motivation, yes, right? Which is motivation. to land the yeah. guy. So. I'm going to say it's a it's a flat roll. You don't get a plus one. Okay, that's good. Well, it's a one, so she does not get through <laughs> oh, that no. fixed goal. No. She is missing that. Yep. No. <laughs> okay. Right, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to jump in if you had something. No, that's, 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 I just had an idea. That's it. So um, I must abide by Miss Ashworth's uh, decision. Mm -hmm. Oh, so glad you saw reason. <laughs> okay, so and she goes, she goes in for the hug. Oh my god! <laughs> so while well, this, this is happening, uh, Miss Popwell and Miss Gate exchange looks like we'll get him here. So, yeah, <laughs> we got this. Yeah, we got this. We got all right, this. so the the night is winding to a close. You must all retire to your your rooms in the expansive Trowbridge Mansion. Um, everyone has their own room. Uh, Constancia's room is down a long and drafty corridor. As you go through, the, the, the candlelight to guide your way flickers ominously. Um, <laughs> I'm sure that you'd want it that way. <laughs> um, and then Anne and Calliope have more boring rooms on the <laughs> floor. I think everything about our lives is more boring compared to Miss <laughs> <laughs> Well, Constancia is, is, um, oh shoot, what's the word? Um, Allured, not allured, uh, but interested or fascinated by the flickering lights and is imagining shadows of wicked footmen around the corner just waiting. Perhaps a highwayman might have taken refuge in the estate. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. Uh, cool. So, uh, next morning. So, some time has passed. It is the, the second day of these preparations and uh, already the household staff is a buzz with uh, triumphs of previous balls, pitfalls and embarrassments. And they're all, you know, going back and forth and it's all very amusing to them because, you know, they don't have to do anything until you tell them. As a reminder, one of your essentials that you wanted to tackle was music and another was the menu. 
Mm-hmm. You have already sent Miss Ashworth off to uh, do the invitations, and uh, she 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 tells you over breakfast that she has them mostly done. And uh, Lord Elias Kensington has uh, graciously offered to take her into town on his errand so she can post them. That sounds like a wonderful use of both of your time. <laughs> um, well, perhaps. I can join Lord Elias and Miss Ashworth because didn't all of us need to go to town to check? The oh, yes. Uh, Lady Sandride and I need to go to town to find musicians. So perhaps we should all go to town. In fact. Oh, I'm sorry. There's only enough room in the curriculum for two. <laughs> oh, Miss Ashworth, we would take separate carriages. <laughs> naturally, naturally. I, for one, would like to consult uh, Lord Kenton as he is clearly um, well versed in music. And I think we would benefit from his expert. He 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 takes a moment aback because he knows he has not disclosed this secret passion. <laughs> uh, but then his 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 curiosity and his interest overwhelms him. He's like, oh yes, uh, perhaps uh, perhaps uh, Miss Sandrite. Sandrite would be so good to, to join me in the curricle, and and you ladies can follow in the carriage. Uh, just just to clarify, we. Have the pleasure of riding with Miss Ashworth. Then <laughs> <laughs> he's already pulling out like uh, he's like. I really think that these new composers are just so interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, much consternation ensues over who will be sitting where in our carriage, and I firmly place Miss Gate in the middle. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Ashworth has the stack of invitations there on her lap. They're going out today. Wonderful. Did you guys want to do anything to the invitations to add a certain curate oh. in the mix? Um, or? Oh, surreptitiously, um, Miss Sandright hands me the invitation she has created for the curate. And when she, we are jockeying for seats, I sort of steady Miss Ashworth by grabbing onto the stack of invitations and, and slip that one in. Okay, you don't have to roll for that, right? Yeah, roll stealth. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Priya, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Constancia, what are your traits? Um, I am forthright and gothic. gothic. Oh, she's sneaky then if she's Ooh, gothic. Yeah. She should be good at sneaking. Okay. So being gothic, you probably have a way of maybe distracting her in some way or or just being like, what do you, what do, you do to make sure she doesn't notice that you're, you're sticking an extra invitation in there? I, oh, because she is so careful with her look, I I tell her that she's missing some plumage from her new bonnet. And as she she needs to free her hands to mess with her bonnet, I gently steady her by grabbing the, because she's trying to do it with one hand. And so I grab the invitation. Okay. Um, I'm going to say that that doesn't really tap your gothicness. Oh, okay. But uh, go ahead and just give me a roll without any. Pl- uh, so, what is your accomplishment? What is your subject? Reading. Reading. Okay. All right. So, just give me a straight roll. Uh, so a one. A one. Oh. Can I like assist in some way? Because I know what she's trying to do. Like we're right. team sand right here. Like we want to help. Um, <laughs> so let me see. I mean, I could just fail, and then we have to seek the cure in. Then you have to figure out another way to get him the, the notice. So uh, I'm going to say that the when when you hand her back the stack, she says, oh, what's this? And she pulls out the one that was like the corner was sticking out a little bit. She's like, oh, I don't I don't recognize. <laughs> someone's someone's going to get embarrassed. Was, was, it, was this from a previous year? How embarrassing. <laughs> Someone was going to get two. <laughs> Constancia sort of ducks her head in embarrassment. She clearly hasn't read who it's to yeah. yet. So, yeah. so oh. does, does, uh, does anybody want to? She's going to throw it away. Oh, because um, you're with, uh, this is basically on yeah. me because you're with him. Uh, so we, Miss Ashworth, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> She um, looks, of course she does. I shove it back in. <laughs> All right. Oh, it's a two. You oh. could spend a good grace and make it a four. 
and that's a success. I, I won't really want to help them. I'll spend my grace. I want to help my friends. So Aww. I will spend my grace. So I think that means do I narrate the outcome? So I shove it back in. She teeters a little bit, looks around confused, but she ain't that bright. So she's just like, oh, oh perhaps we should get going, Miss Ashworth. Time, Tempest Fugit. <laughs> oh, oh, yes, Fugit. <laughs> 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 All right. so, night, as, as we are in the carriage to the town to uh, sort of further confuse Miss Ashworth, I begin talking about the different options for the meal. We talk about hot pies and fruit and perhaps some pastries of the complicated variety and some tea. <laughs> oh, I do love a good pastry. Don't forget to talk about the white soup and the next. Uh, I do hope they'll be serving pigeon pie. <laughs> the partridges. Oh, French you're partridges. Me hungry. How many partridges? <laughs> it's too many partridges. <laughs> I don't know. I believe it's 74. <laughs> that does seem 74. like an abnormally large number of partridges. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but, I just thought dinner at, at Trowbridge was so wonderful. We should we should certainly talk with the head cook there about what to serve, don't you think? <laughs> Well, I, I already did so. I got up early this morning and I went down and I talked to the cook and the cook made some suggestions, which include a white bean soup and <laughs> white bean soup, white soup, <laughs> just white soup. <laughs> Otherwise, it gotta be white. Uh oh, sorry. Everyone here is white in this world. Selfie, come on. White soup and, and nuggets. Horrible. I don't actually know what nuggets is. Aside, um, but nuggets, it's just boozy stuff. It's okay. like drinks, I believe. Uh, More white soup, I say. <laughs> yes. But we already also discussed the um, the liquor yeah. and the. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna say uh, actually the cook is a, a non-player character, so oh, okay. I'm gonna interject. Uh, you did go down and try to talk to her before breakfast, but she was incredibly busy. Okay. Uh, and she seems very flustered. You gather that she's new to her post at Trowbridge. So while she was very, very nice and uh, listened politely to what you were suggesting, you gather that she didn't really take it in because she was too busy with breakfast. And you tried to find out a good time to come back and she wasn't really sure when she wouldn't be busy. Okay. So that is something for you all to play out in a, in a longer scene when you can maybe address that fully. Okay. So we that still have to figure out the food is what you're saying. You still have to figure out the food, but you have uh, this in where you have this, uh, this start starting point with the, with the head cook. Okay. okay. Sounds good. Okay. Uh, so you arrive in the town of Heathford, and it's a it's a it's a lovely day for England. Uh, in other words, it's overcast <laughs> uh, and uh, not that warm. Um, I hope I don't catch ill in my thin muslin. <laughs> don't get the muslin disease. I will try my best. <laughs> um, there are many different businesses, shops in Heathford. It's a it's a middling sized town um where would you all like to go we need to find musicians yeah how does one go about doing that i don't know i was hoping you would have about that uh perhaps we could go to the local halls where perhaps they can oh the, the inns we should go to the inn we should go to the wheat chief <laughs> uh, let's say so i think we're actually going to split up at this point because you also had people to talk to in town miss gate that were food related right yeah. Or gown related. So can we, in the interest of time, can we say that we go to the inn who points us in the direction of where we can find some, or there are musicians there that we can sure. talk to. The hen and cock. <laughs> the way you said cock. <laughs> That's how they say it. Cock. That's how they say you it. You have to enunciate all of the cock. <laughs> okay, I think that's enough. <laughs> That's enough cock for one <laughs> gaming session. <laughs> okay. Uh, so you arrive at the Hen and Cock. <laughs> a very uh, bustling inn. It is in the morning, though, so things are fairly quiet. 
you know, at the bar, I suppose, <laughs> in the pub, in the pub is the is the uh, proprietor. Um, you know, tending, uh, answering the door is his youngest daughter, uh, and you can hear, you know, his his wife and maybe some of his older daughters in the kitchen uh, shouting out instructions on on baking. The food for the day, um, so they're they're not their busiest right now. They don't have that many customers, but they are in preparation for for the day. So this is me, Miss Sandra, and Lord Elias. No, oh, no. the two of us when we didn't role play your conversation with him about music, right? Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. Okay. okay, so um, you all have a very technical conversation about uh, preferences. You find uh, there is some divergence in his his greater desire is to have have singing at the ball oh, right a very and, unusual choice right and and he he modestly suggests that there are many fine singers among the gentlemen there he he, he would like to count himself <laughs> among that number <laughs> and so he is trying to convince you that there should be singing I'm going to try to decide how I feel about this. <laughs> um, well, obviously, I'm conflicted. Because he's a good catch, but I don't know how I feel about his taste. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So um, maybe I use my, I am also charming. Oh. Maybe I use my charming side to say, um, oh, Lord Kensington, how much I admire your taste. What an innovative idea that would have the whole neighborhood talking <laughs> Uh, I, I I question, however, whether Lady Kensington would like to be such a um, unusual source of town gossip or town conversation. I imagine word of Thinden. Perhaps you will start a new trend, and it will be called the Ken. <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully, he so recoil. He recoils <laughs> from the idea of uh, being a, a topic of conversation. Okay, so you're going to need to roll for that okay. um, and <laughs> add one for being charming. For being charming. Six! Oh my God, God, you are rolling insane! Yay! Uh, he he looks deeply like <laughs> into your eyes and he, and, he, and he is so charmed by you. He puts aside the dearest wish of his heart. <laughs> to sing at his mother's ball and say, perhaps, perhaps you're right. Maybe a more conventional approach will really be appreciated in a town such as Heathford. But perhaps maybe um, after supper or at, at supper, I mean, you might indulge us with it. Oh, well, you flatter me. And he's <laughs> obviously into it. Okay. He's obviously into it. Good. Because I did roll a six. So yeah. that, that would be my due. Um, so, um, he, uh, he has his own business in town. Do you require his assistance in obtaining accompaniment? I, I mean, musicians. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I guess I could say no. I mean, it's up to you guys. You, you, you want him around guys? I mean, I, I mean, I won't be with you. So... Are you, you're not with us? Or are you with us? I thought you said we split up. So I think we did. That makes more sense. Okay. I just want to, we, I just want to like have us get to resolution. So he will, um, he will accompany the, the two of you, uh, Miss Ashworth and um, Miss, Miss Gate in obtaining some assist, some additional help for, for the serving food prep, for the food prep. Yeah. And make yeah. the, like the catering service. Yeah. Yeah. Staff. Would they go to the bakery? Service? I don't know how they did it. I would think that for a ball, they would need to bring in extra staff. Yeah, they probably hire some extra people. Yeah. But where would they find them? Oh, I don't know. In other either other households, or maybe you go into town and like put the word out. Because yeah. So I was thinking that we could go to the bakery, uh, a bakery, and like while we're searching for the pastries, we inquire about. Oh, okay. okay that's a good idea. Cool. I think the pastries would be made on site. Let me get yeah. pedantic. Yeah. Maybe but you go to the butcher yes. to get good cuts of meat. That's right. Butcher, okay. Yeah. Nice. You just want to have pastries, I'm all about. I love the I love the verisimilitude. Yeah. Right. I, don't know, I, I don't actually, I'm talking out of my ass, but I'm like 99% <laughs> sure they would be. Yeah. Okay, so then we're at the inn. We find the musician. So there aren't any musicians right now. It's it's like middle of the morning. So you would just put the word out. 
Yeah. So inquire uh, with right. Right now you're talking to the youngest daughter of the innkeeper. She's like 14. You know she's like uh rollic like romping with uh romping, frolicking with the uh like roguish violinist who plays in the tavern or whatever. Yeah. You can tell all his buddies. Yeah. So where can we find the musicians, dear? (laughs) <laughs> uh, usually they're asleep right now. Where are they sleeping? <laughs> we'll wake them. This, now, this is our biggest priority. Like you can't right. have a ball without mm-hmm. epic musicians. So where are they sleeping? Bobbin makes them sleep in the bar. To the bar we shall go. <laughs> Thank you, dear lady. All right. Hey, you are intrepid. You are enterprising. <laughs> this ball has got to go off. It's true. Right. It needs to be the best ball ever. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I just, I hike up my petticoats above my ankle because I don't want to be messing with that mud, mm. and I tromp on out to the barn. All right, uh, the musicians are all sleeping in the hayloft. Excuse oh, me, good morning. Hello. Hello. Uh, hello. <laughs> they groggily I hello with them. over this. <laughs> oh, what, what? Is it, is it? Is it dinner time yet? Uh, is it time for us to play the inn? Oh, well, I would think they would be delighted to see faces such as ours first thing in the morning. But no, it is not yet time to play at the inn. But we'd like to inquire about reserving your services for a ball. Oh, he's so hung over, it's hard for him to string sentences together. Hello. <laughs> would you like some water? Oh. You you discern from his grunting that that is yes. yes. So we go over and so you're just like talking with these strange men. Yep, gotta get this shit done. Ain't no time. Wow. Uh, so I'm very charming, Selby. They'll be down. Um, <laughs> I feel like being charming and flirting with these guys would actually be detrimental to you. Oh uh, yeah, it could okay. be. So I am gonna make you roll a charming with a minus. Okay. Six, baby. What is up with these dice? These are some hot dice. Right. These are some weighted dice. Yes. My dice. These are mine from my D and D campaign. This is crazy. <laughs> uh, so the musicians uh, leer at you for uh, for being so bold as yeah. to come upon men that you do not know who are not of your station. You know, that's fair. In their boudoir, <laughs> their bar, <laughs> the hayloft. <laughs> um, uh, but they, but they say, oh yeah, we wouldn't mind making some money. They don't usually have, uh, you know, I mean, we don't usually have a lot of requests for for that kind of music. But I think, uh, I think Charlie knows a few tunes. Do you know the baker and the candle maker? Is that a song? <laughs> <laughs> oh, then we can learn it. Do you know the barrel dance? Uh, I think so. Do you know down the lane and up the river? Of course. Oh, we'll be fine. <laughs> what Could about, we perhaps hear you play? What about Mr. Beverage's Maggot? You know what that is? <laughs> da, 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 that's what it's called. Mr. Beverage's oh, Maggot. That one is so slow. Oh, well, that's it's a really sexy like, one. Slower? I'm trying. I'm on the make here, guys. <laughs> I need the sexy He's Regency like, song. Um, uh, he says, oh, yeah, we know that one. <laughs> 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 um. <laughs> So, oh, oh, yeah. oh, what about the four corners of the circle? Well, before we get too far ahead of ourselves, ladies, we have not yet discussed remuneration. <laughs> oh, we will have some late compensation. No worries. Did he, we mention this is for the Kensington ball? He quotes you a price that you know is more than double what you usually pay a musician. Okay, I'm going to do some negotiation here. Is that going to require another roll? That seems exorbitantly well, high. Let me say, you already rolled once this I time. I did. Let's put into it. Okay, yeah. I'm oh, thinking, like, they're going to get a lot of advertisement from playing at a thing like this. was kind it of... It could elevate them beyond just the playing at the inn at dinner time. Yes. They could be the talk of the countryside. So do I roll? Yes. You have okay. to roll. Well, let me see. You're uh, charming. charming and compassionate. I am also going to give you... A negative. A negative because... Dag. Yeah. <laughs> you, you guys are being very bold I'm right very, now. We are being very bold. Uh, uh, yeah. All right. Here's a roll. One. Um, Constantia would be proud because she is forthright. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so he says, oh, yeah, I'm sure. Covered in glory will be great. But we still need to get paid. 
do it? Do we pay the extra money? Will Lady Kensington object to our spending? Well, she she, did, not she did wait until a week before to plan this. <laughs> yeah. exactly. uh, I'll compensate you at the rate you suggested. However, you must secure your own co coats or jackets, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, waistcoats. Mm -hmm. Finery. You <laughs> must dress appropriately for the venue. He scratches his whiskers and he says, all right. His whiskers. And we need to hear you play. And you uh, must shave. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, by this time, the other musicians have like roused themselves and like you know brushed the hay off their instruments. And he said, "Oh, let's play, let's play, Sir Beverages Maggot for these <laughs> lovely ladies." And uh, they they strike up the tune. Um, not great acoustics in the barn, um, but use your musical talent, your accomplishment, and you get a plus two. Okay. To discern their level of competence. Four. Okay, plus two is six. So you have an excellent sense of their accomplishment. They are kind of diamonds in the rough. They are actually quite uh, accomplished musicians, uh, even though they do they are quite rough around the edges. <laughs> Well, I think we can make uh, we can be confident that um, all of our musical needs will be excellently equipped. Mm -hmm. So uh, you are engaged for the party. We but... need half up front. <laughs> oh, we don't have. Oh, we don't have... Uh, like rifling through my, <laughs> through my petticoats, oh, sir. looking in my bosom. Like, <laughs> sir, we are ladies. We do not carry oh, cash. Uh, However, I think it is we are here on behalf of Lord Kensington. Clearly. Oh, oh, um, okay. So, uh, new tact. Um, we, as ladies, certainly do not carry cash. However, if you would pr like to present yourself either later, t later today or tomorrow at the estate, we will give you the cash upon your rehearsal. Mm. They're diamonds in the rough. They're going to need a little apology. He will throw in dinner. Oh, he agrees. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you have an audition scheduled for, let's say, tomorrow. Well, it's a rehearsal. We agreed. <laughs> um, We're committed now. They better not suck. Uh, Constantia elsewhere at this point? She's with the butcher. Yes. I'm at the butcher and Miss Ashworth and, I guess, Elias. Okay. Well, so, she went. Did Miss Ashworth go to the... go to? Would they post invites or they probably actually have someone... They would have staff. someone hand deliver them. But that's okay. For yeah, this whatever, purpose, yeah. they can post them. Oh, maybe Miss Ashworth didn't know that. Yeah, she's, she's kind of kidding around, idiot. and Lord well, Elias is like, What are you doing? Why didn't you just give those to Collins? And she's oh. like, oh. I, Can we also, no. uh, since we're like building our own Regency world, can we say that we're not all white? Yeah, sure. Yeah, let's do that. Because that it made me sad. Yeah. When I said that earlier. I was like, Why do we have to do that? We're making our own world. It's a well, diverse world. In, yep. in Sanditon, there is a non white character. That's, oh, right. One character in all of Jane Austen mm -hmm. Canada. <laughs> well, you know, in Britain, or I mean, yeah, but time, I'm just saying, yeah. like, why? Yeah, true. Let's mm -hmm. do it. All right. Well, so, perhaps the reason I suspect that I am the, the uh, child of whatever, whatever, of Lady Kensington is because our coloring is similar. Oh, mm -hmm. there you go. Mm -hmm. in, the, in the Jane Austen Regency love, uh, iPhone game, there is an Indian character. Cool. Her last name is Acharya. Nice. Yeah. Um, you all can look like anything you want, though. Let's just say that. All right. That's right. So, uh, you all, uh, so, <laughs> Miss Ash. Woke Ms. Austin. Yeah. Sorry. Woke Austin. <laughs> Miss Ashworth has left the invitations in the carriage after realizing that what they are not needed in <laughs> town. <laughs> and she will have uh, Collins <laughs> deliver them later. Uh, and then you three have proceeded to the butcher. Uh, Mr. Uh, excuse me, Lord Elias Kensington uh, has insisted that uh, he will handle these negotiations to make sure that you get the best price and the best cuts of meat. Um, and you all... Maybe he's the best cut of meat. Mm -hmm. uh, and while he is doing that, um, you can, uh, you know, try to find some additional help, like talk to... Other people. I'm, yeah. So I'm, how about I'm conversing with the butcher's wife? Okay. Very what good. if the daughters from the inn come? Hmm. I guess you would have male servers. Would yeah, you would have, have to have male yeah. servers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Never mind. Well, they could be scullery maids. So anyway, yeah. okay, keep going. That was a, that was a, yeah. <laughs> so uh, the butcher's wife, uh, upon your inquiry, says, Oh, what date did you say again? Oh, this, oh, you, 
you know, I would volunteer my boys to come and, you know, they've, they've, they clean up all right. They, they, they do serve tables every once in a while. But I, I dare say, I believe that they are already engaged. I think there's a, a dinner party at another estate a that they will be uh -oh. no. serving. So, oh, I wish I could help. I'll definitely spread the word. Mm -hmm. Good luck. Excuse me. I mean, we're not there. But yeah, I mean, Priya. But this is, yeah. I'm just saying, like, you guys don't know. Yeah. No, this is as me, oh, not as my character. They'll have to cancel that party. Right? Well, like, this is the most. I'm just saying. Well, so basically, Constancia is taken aback and she, glads, she glances sidelong at Elias, who is conversing in the corner with a butcher about the cuts of meat. <laughs> and she says, she leans forward to the butcher's wife, whose name is. Mrs. Pottsworth. <laughs> it says, my dear Mrs. Pottsworth, you do realize this is the ball at Trowbridge, correct? The annual ball. So whoever has, has scheduled a dinner party must have been mistaken about scheduling it. I pray tell you inform the good sirs and madams that they will have to move the party. And we, knowing that it is a week or, or less than a week away at this point, will gladly double remuneration for your sons to be servers. Y'all are just like making it rain. <laughs> not, our money, not our money. Well, my money. Maybe, so she's but. Oh well, I, I I certainly don't know about that, but but uh, you know I I will uh, I I wouldn't dare tell Mister Ashworth what to do with his time and money. I I I'll tell my boys that to 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 check in with Mister Collins up at Trowbridge, but oh I I couldn't tell him to cancel his event. Mister Ashworth, any relation to Miss Ashworth? Oh. Yes, I believe it's he's that young lady's father. Oh. It's we to the neighborhood and, and perhaps they got their dates mistaken. Oh, how embarrassing. How how terrible for everyone. <laughs> um, Constantia, uh, even though she has a few more questions from Mrs. Potsworth, as she is a lady who has been in the area for quite some time, mm -hmm. turns to Miss Ashworth and Over says, Miss, Huh? We're not there. Yeah, Are she's there? Like, turn, turns to Miss Ashworth. Yeah. Ashworth. Oh, Miss Ashworth. Oh, sorry. Yeah, God, yeah. I'm confusing everything. So Miss Ashworth and and moves firmly in her direction where she is mooning, her uh, giving cow eyes towards Elias. <laughs> <laughs> and, she, and she says, my dear Miss Ashworth, I understand your father is having a dinner party on the very night of this ball that you're helping to organize. Are you aware of the situation? We're having a dinner party on the 27th. But that, the that is the night of, yeah. <laughs> and that is also the night of the ball, and she just made out all the invitations. <laughs> but but the night of the ball is the twenty seventh. What date did you put on the invitations? The twenty seventh. Yes. Uh... <laughs> um, perhaps, my dear lady, you should tarry on home and have a conversation with your papa. To reschedule said dinner party for the twenty eighth, <laughs> or the twenty first, or the twenty fifth. The twenty. Literally any other day. Literally any other day. We will take care of handing the invitations to Mister Collins. Oh, I, I don't, I don't know if I that you know, Papa gets quite cross with me sometimes. And I don't know that I can tell that to him. Why don't you tell him? <laughs> um, I could, but perhaps this is for conversation with my dear friends, Miss Popwell and Miss Sandwright. Yes, our dear friends will certainly help us. Thank you so much. And she yes. goes in for the hug. <laughs> <laughs> and which, which I gracefully step away from and turn back to Mrs. Uh, Potsworth and ask her quietly under my breath if she knew I can't remember what I'm going to ask her never mind I was going to have her like recognize me or be like there's some weird resemblance but that I don't know how to say that in um well I think that even if she thought as much she wouldn't um, say it. it's worth yeah it's worth more than 
her business is to spread rumors in town. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if if she did have any kind of reaction or or thoughts in that direction, she certainly would not voice them without uh, unless under you know extreme mm -hmm. circumstances. Okay. So then, how about we just say our business at the butcher's concluded. We go to meet up with the rest of our party. All right. Can I have a scene where I am on the Usington and we oh. looks wounded? Oh, okay. I think you just did. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Lord Kensington, upon uh, wait, am I with you? Upon your party being uh, reunited once again, he says, uh, "Miss." Uh, Keep on forgetting your name, Sandright. Sandright. Miss Sandright, I, I I was I was just looking at these these cuts of meat in the butchery, and I had the most brilliant <laughs> idea for the music. And <laughs> and he and he offers his arm to you, and he's talking rapidly uh, about the music and his interests, and da 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 da. He's completely engrossed, uh, and he is very engrossing as well. Is he? Uh, yes. <laughs> in, in a broody kind of way. Um, and as you, uh, turn a corner, you, you almost bump into someone else coming around the corner and look who it is. It is the, uh, curate for Trowbridge, uh, Mr. James Frazier, James Frazier, who looks alarmingly like a certain actor of the same name. <laughs> A certain Scotsman character on a right. certain show about time travel. His yeah. arms are filled, his, his muscular arms oh are God. filled with books. Oh my God. And his, <laughs> <laughs> he spends so many ta nights poring over the good word that he sometimes forgets to shave. Mm. So he's got, he's got very rugged features and stubble. And he looks at you. I'm very interested. <laughs> he's, he's taken aback when he sees you linked arm in arm with this other man. And he, he, obviously he knows who Lord Elias Kensington is. So he, he bows appropriately. He says, Lord Kensington, Miss Sandright, good, good to see you. And I say, oh, oh, uh, Jay, I mean, um, what a wonderful coincidence I've been to you today. Uh, and I look very much like I want to smooth over some awkwardness that's right. occurring. So what do you roll yeah. oh. to smooth the awkward yeah. situation? Maybe she could introduce her friends. Oh, yeah. <clears okay. <clears <throat> so, um, so uh, Mr. Frazier, of course you know, or maybe you, you may know from your younger days, Miss Powell, who is from the neighborhood before she went away to school, and now she has curtsy. I'm so delighted to meet you, Mr. <laughs> Frazier. Eyes sparkling. And here is our new friend, Miss Hello, dear. <laughs> I've heard very much about you from your dear friend, yes. Miss Miss Sandwright, and I curtsy as well. Yes, I've been telling them all about you, Jit. I mean, Mr. Fraser. Um, ladies, as you know, Mr. Fraser and I were children together, and and have... I'm Miss Ashworth. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this is essential. <laughs> Can I stomp on her foot? <laughs> yeah, you should do that. You yeah, like, introduce her. Rude. 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 It was rude. Nobody likes her. And uh, Miss James Fraser with something a little be. However, Lord Elias is also looking at both of us <laughs> and narrowing his eyes in so, sudden understanding. I am going to say that your attempt to be compassionate has come off as obsequious. Oh, no. <laughs> You're going to have to roll with a minus okay. to smooth over this awkward situation. Yeah. I think James knows what's up. Let's see. A five. Okay. You barely managed barely. to eke it out. <laughs> and he, he, he summons a uh, reluctant smile. Right. And uh, they, they exchange pleasantries as, uh, you know, man to man. How about that? Chest thumping. Would this be a situation for embarrassment, though? So if she had that's failed, a fail. okay. if she had that's failed, a fail. she would have taken a social. Okay. That's kind of more interesting. You want? Sure. All right, I yeah. failed. Okay. <laughs> I have a social embarrassment. Well, you did. You did narrate that they both know the score. Yeah. Right. 
So you you managed to avoid the worst possible scenario where someone calls you out as mm. being a two-time mm. influencer. <laughs> would it be fisticuffs? Fisticuffs at dawn. I'm sure that Miss Gate would love to see some fisticuffs. <laughs> I would be delighted by some fisticuffs, only because such add such drama to our lives. In the street, and they'd have to remove their jackets. Oh my God, Miss Kate, I do think you might be rubbing off on me. <laughs> uh, so they both narrow their eyes at you and each other, but <laughs> manage to keep things terse and polite. Oh, that's good. Uh, when Mr. Fraser excuses himself to go about his duties, Lord Elias very naturally allows your arm to drop from him. Oh, no. Uh, no. And you have taken a social embarrassment <laughs> that uh, Lord Elias believes that you might have something going on. Oh, he's on to me. I mean, Fraser. that's not I true. Right. Yeah. Um, okay, so I see, let's see that the awkwardness you could cut with a knife. So <laughs> I, <clears throat> Mr. Frazier, um, do you enjoy dancing? Oh, uh, not, that's just something that I personally care for. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you He'd rather are be cutting town. wood in the highlands. <laughs> there are a few more little tasks that, uh, that Elias Kensington has to do about town. Uh, uh, he certainly doesn't need you ladies to accompany him. Uh, you make a plan for you all to meet again in a few hours to travel back to Trowbridge. But until that such time, you are all on your own devices. Oh, are we all we ladies together, together again? Oh, do we go to the trust? I need to go to the trust. Oh, right. I need to find some new ribbon. Stat. <laughs> I've only got four days or however many. Do we go to Ford's? Okay, you yeah. head into the tailor's shop, um, Mr. Nelson. Nelson. Okay, uh, let me see. I'm Do we need to take okay. a social embarrassment for? I guess it was my idea for going out and like rousing the musicians from the bar. No, because no one really saw that. Um, and then I think it's kind of amazing I've made it through this without embarrassing myself socially yet. <laughs> How are you or physically harming So myself. you want to maybe write down your social embarrassment, and that means that you're going to take some minus penalty to social interactions with Lord Elias Kensington, perhaps with his family or other people who might he might tell of this. Mm -hmm. She can use her grace point to right. clear that. Right. She could. Okay. Yeah. Or she could wait, you know, yeah. time passes and people forget. Okay, so uh, you All right, music go to check. the tailor's shop, Mr. Nelson, um, and uh, he is he's quite busy. He's one of the he's the best tailor in town. So all of the young ladies of society have uh, already been by to drop off their gowns for alterations or to have their measurements taken. You're you're kind of lower in the line at this point because it is right up close to the ball. Oh, that's okay. I had I previously got my gown in town. Oh, well. When I was there for school. Um, new ribbons, some accoutrement all. Okay. Dress it up a bit. It's a little tight in the chest, but what are you gonna do? <laughs> and I think in my case, I think Sir Engelbrook has provided me everything I need. Mm -hmm. He is he is my wait, if you're the ward of someone, is he your patron? I don't know. He's my uncle Engelbrook. Yeah, he's <laughs> and, but I just need again. I also need maybe a little bit of ribbon for my bonnet. Mm -hmm. So should I be asking you at this point? So so Costancia, um, I understand that you are the ward of Lord Engelbert. Brook Brook Lord Engelbrook. I um, like to be a ward. Yes. Um, is there anything that you share about? Knowledge of your parents. Ooh, that's a really forward question. I, I have, I have perhaps suspicions. And Lord Engelbrook found me in an orphanage that that is often used for for situations of people with higher rank, and 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 adopted me as his own because he knew that my parents were important, and I have suspicions. But I have good breeding, and he has taken care of me and taught me the best of manners. And so I, I, I feel like something untoward may have happened to my father. 
But really, I believe that my I know who my mother is. I'm, I'm slightly scandalized by these truths, but I think <laughs> Miss Gate, you're, Miss Gate I, I think that your penchant for drama is rubbing off on me because I do find this story fascinating. Yes, yes I find I need to be forthright in this. I don't know if you believe me or not, <laughs> but, but I, I am without my good friend Lord Denby here. I have no one to speak with. And you have us. And I, yes. So I, I am trying to just, I believe this, this personage may be at the ball and, and I don't know whether to speak up or not. Well, this is a fascinating turn and allow me to say, Miss Gate, thanks to your help with the situation with my curate friend, I feel that we are in confidence. Perhaps we could help you find the correct opportunity oh. to broach your questions to the person at the ball, since we are such dear friends now. <laughs> it's been a day. <laughs> Perhaps that might be possible, but... Pray tell, I, I do actually have an obstacle for us right now that we have to overcome in that Mish Asworth's father has contracted a dinner at the same day of the ball. And she what? Is this. Oh, no. I'm so shocked to knock the over the dress form by accident. What? <laughs> oh, 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 no. <laughs> I'm here too. <laughs> one respond with total rage in a Regency right. format. I'm sorry, you didn't realize the 27th was the same day as the 27th? Well, I was thinking the that, 27th uh, were you, was so were you? close to the end of the month, but his father's was so close to the beginning of the next month. I lean in. I'm leaning. I lean over her. I don't think father would like that much. M Miss, M Miss Gates said that you all might help me. We then will all go to your home and have your father reschedule this dinner. But you are coming. Hooray! So perhaps that is what we do now. Well, wait, we yeah, have to I think we better do that, and I don't think I'll be getting any ribbon today either. <laughs> <laughs> so are you sure you want to... Do we have time? Um, or perhaps... You, you're going to get home in time for tea. Um, would she they... She could send a message at the post office right ahead of us, right? Like, we will be coming by to call tomorrow, and this is the reason why. Right. So how about if I take her arm and drag her to the post mm -hmm. and stand there while she writes, like I dictate to her mm -hmm. exactly what she writes. She posts it immediately. And like, they'll, I mean, it's all in the neighborhood. Right. So like we pay extra to have him deliver it right then. Right. Some boy will take, you know, yeah. To be like mm -hmm. heads up. Yeah. This is happening and we're coming by tomorrow. Right. And she, under your watchful gaze, she writes it with her, uh, frankly, beautiful penmanship. Uh, and it's, it's sent off immediately. Uh, so, yeah, that's good. Um, you are... We still need to figure out the food, though, right? Some of the Because you were going to talk Perhaps, to the cook. Yeah. yeah. Perhaps after the tea, we bring the cook up to talk to us. Oh, dear. You don't bring the cook upstairs. Well, we go down to the cook. <laughs> don't you want to down to Nabby? <laughs> Uh, so, uh, Mr. Nelson's shop is, is quite busy, um, um, uh, and none of you need specifically <coughs> from him. You're just making some purchases. Well, we did, but we dragged, well, I guess I only dragged, you guys are still there. I guess like yeah. we could say I dragged Miss Ashworth by myself. Okay. So, um, I will say that you all can make what purchases you have. You need to make with the change you have, and you all just make it back in time to uh, meet up with uh, Lord Kensington to travel back to Trowbridge for tea. Who wants to break it to him that you promised the musicians double the money and you promised the serving staff double the money? I'll take responsibility for the music. Okay. And I guess I have uh, yeah, so he's like, oh, well, I might as well know the damage now. What's, uh, what, what, what have you, 
uh, contacted the musicians? Well, unfortunately, because we have waited so long this year to put the arrangements in order, mm -hmm. I'm afraid that we were required to pay the musicians more than is usually. And I tell him, much I mean, whatever the amount is. He is angered by that. And uh, he said, I don't suppose you gave it a second thought because it wasn't your money. Elias, if I may, I would ask you to remember that we are doing the best we can at the behest of your mother. We have been given no specific instructions. We, we tried to negotiate with the musicians to lower the cost, but let me add that we were fortunate to get them at all. And one cannot have a, mu a ball without musicians, now can one? You're gonna have to roll. Okay. Oh, six, dang, what is going on with these die? <laughs> he is in the palm of my hand. <laughs> Um, so you do convince him that well, he'll pay. Some, let's say he'll pay the money. Yeah, you, you do convince him that uh, of the need, but he says, "I will not agree to one cent until I personally approve of these ragamuffins that you have no doubt." Well, so, it is indeed fortunate that Miss Sandbride and I took the opportunity to schedule them to come by for a rehearsal in the ballroom tomorrow. So you will have the opportunity to to as long as your heart desires. Hmm. <laughs> Fine. Okay, but he's kind of impressed with my mom. But there. <laughs> <laughs> but that, yeah, and you also suggested you haven't made any contracts yet, but you suggested that you might have to lure away. Or if you guys are going to cancel the whole thing, then maybe that won't be necessary. But you at least promise two butcher boys do double the payment. Yeah. We can't, we yeah. can't cancel the ball. No, no, no. no. It's after dinner party. Oh, right. right. Oh, that's right. So, but that's the, uh, afraid of Elias' possible towering rage after witnessing his discussion, his, his robust discussion with Miss Popwell. Um, she... She sidles up carefully and says, good sir, I am sorry to have to be the bearer of bad news, but unfortunately there is a deep confusion and Mr. Ashwell of Ashworth has contracted a dinner party by accident on the date of this annual ball. And as such, the extra service we require was not available. So I had to promise to two butcher boys double the usual serving amount. Uh, okay, what do you roll to convince him of this that this is necessary? Oh my god, two. Two? Two. Oh. Do you want to spend a good grace to increase yes. it? Yes, let's use it. Okay. I suppose as long <laughs> as I'm being bled dry by one of you, it might be bled dry by all of you. <laughs> So he reluctantly agrees, but but be sure to negotiate a fair going rate with the rest of the staff. I can accommodate for a few extra coins for those two. I, I know them personally, they're quite nice boys, but I refuse to pay one dime over the usual rate for the rest of the staff. Do you hear me? I do, good sir. And Miss Constantia Gate curtsies deeply in gratitude. I wasn't involved in any of this. <laughs> <laughs> says Miss <Ashford. laughs> I think that's pretty your, <laughs> your father is having a dinner party on the 27th. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> okay, so you go back to Trowbridge for tea. Um, and so you have one other thing that you might do today at, uh, at some time between tea and dinner time or after dinner is to talk with the head cook. Uh, and then I'll say that's enough for one day. We close it down. Okay. Um, so Miss, would Miss, Miss Gate would take point on it. Yes. Uh, so when do you go down there? Uh, how about right after tea? Let's say we have tea. Okay. So right after tea, the cook is taking her own tea. Uh, and this is uh, one time of day where she can be off her feet for a few moments. She is still 
uh, shouting instructions to the scullery maids as they do the dishes and, and prepare, do the, do the uh, initial preparations for dinner. Okay, so she's a bit distracted, but this is probably as good as time as any. Great. Um, Her name Ms. is, hold on a second, Mrs. Everett. Mrs. Everett. Mrs. Everett is sitting on a stool in the kitchen, and her her poor aching feet uh, are are in a in a hot water bath. <laughs> she didn't expect you, um, and she's drinking her tea and having a few leftovers and saying, "Oh, Mary, be careful with the china," <laughs> things like that. <laughs> so, um, and, uh, am I by myself, or are all of us there? Whatever you I guess you're by your, would you, I mean, I we can go if you want to have other interaction, but I have no problem if you wanted to hands on your own. Yeah, I probably could handle one on my own as to not intimidate. Maybe she'll know something about Lady Kensington's oh, activities during that's, this certain time yes, period. Yes, yeah. that's better if you're alone yeah. so she can dive So, so late, Constantia goes in and sits down and, and greets Mrs. Everett. Oh, oh, says, I'm so sorry, dear. And she tries to, like, hide her feet in the bucket. No, no, please, please be, be relaxed and... You just served us delightful tea. Allow oh, me to. I thank you very much. I do try my best. You know, it's been so hard these days. I'm just so busy all the time. And, you know, I'm not used to being a head cook. I was, you know, I worked myself up from the scullery maid in the next town. Blah, Is she blah, from blah, Minnesota? Blah, blah, blah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I thought she said we could be diverse. My dear Miss Everett. I interrupt her. My dear Miss Everett. Okay. Please. Oh, oh yes, please, yes, A yes, moment. Yes, yes. Um, as you know, we have the annual ball, and your food is so delightful and wonderful that I would like to take a moment to go over the menu with you so we can all be prepared and, and understand what extra help you may need in order to pull this off successfully. Oh, my dear. Do you mind if I the ball? <laughs> that has been much on my mind because this is the first year that I'm the head cook here at Trailbridge, and I, I do so want to do the best I can. And the old cook worked so hard for so many days before the ball, and I just don't feel like I don't have the time. Oh, dear, Miss Everett. Day and this and that. Oh, and I'm yeah, I interrupt her, her again. And says, my dear Miss Everett, oh, why yes. don't we start with the – with with – your signature dishes. Tell me what you are very good at making. Uh, so she names a few dishes, I guess, like, I don't know, what would be appropriate for a ball? Roast beef? Mm -hmm. Sure. Right? She's really good at that. Uh, she has various soups. Uh, you know, nothing. I would say that everything that she says that she's good at is pretty standard fare. Nothing that really would sparkle okay. or stand out. Um. So, and she says, you know, oh, of course, if I had more time, that would be a different thing. But the demands of cooking day to day for the estate just don't leave me enough time to do anything elaborate. Well, perhaps Mrs. Kensington and the estate will understand if tomorrow we have cold supper and easy meals so you can focus on the food for the dinner. For cold supper? <laughs> How could I show my face if I serve such a thing to but Lady Kensington? But unfortunately, I believe Mrs. Lady Kensington will be far more upset if the victuals for the ball are less than satisfactory and less than stellar. Um, I noticed that you have a very good um, assistant cook or maid over there who's, who's listening to you. Perhaps she can sit down and write down the ingredients and your requirements she can make sure you have all that you need. So I'm going to say that you are being pretty candid with her forthright yeah. and saying like Lady Kensington will not like it if the ball sucks, but dinner on Tuesday was okay. <laughs> so um, why don't you roll? And I'm going to say that this is, this is a situation where delicacy and tact are mm. important. So this is going to be forthright. It's going to take a minus one. Okay. To your role. Five. Okay, so four, still a success. Okay. Um, so, and since I tapped one of your failures for that role, um, you get a good grace point. Okay. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, she says to you, 
oh, perhaps you're right. I've been worried so much about being the best head cook for Lady Kensington that I, I lost sight of how important this ball really is to her and everyone in the in the town. Um, you know, perhaps you're right if we could uh, maybe shorten our prep time for some of the meals leading up to the event, then we could really dedicate ourselves fully. Oh, 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 Suzanne, come over here and I'll, and I'll give you a list of ingredients. Um, and perhaps uh, the young lady would not mind breaking the news to Lady Kensington about the cold supper prior to the ball. I would be happy to. All right. Uh, so that was good. Um, so you talked with the chef, uh, the head cook. I was nervous listening to that. I was like, Freya, you better pull this off. Or we're not going to have any dang food. Um, and she she does mention a few dishes that would be up to par for a very lovely ball that she is capable of making now that she can accommodate for a little extra time. Um, uh, she believes that the she'll, she'll just add the ingredients to the regular shopping list um and uh and have the boys pick it up and you know if there's anything special that you all want beyond this um you may have to uh talk with mr collins about adding uh, adding any uh, additional drinks or ingredients to the list what if we offered a signature cocktail instead of the <laughs> usual mix to save time uh, and money the white uh, soup russian yes <laughs> So that's the end of day two. Uh, you have done a lot today. <clears throat> you managed to trip into town and you have uh, advanced one of your essential elements, which is the music. Um, and food. That was our second essential and element. And your second essential element, you you talked with the head cook. Tomorrow you it's will you have a, a, a rehearsal with the musicians. You will call on Mr. Ashworth to resolve this conflict oh schedule. And you're also going to talk to Lady Kensington about the cold dinner. That and this is perfect time. because then I will come face to face with Lady Kensington. Right, okay. <laughs> so let's say, oh God, it pains me to suggest. What if I go with Miss Ashworth <laughs> to speak to her father? You deal with the musicians and that will give you time to talk. I'm pointing at Miss Sanwright. Give you time to speak with um, Lord uh, with Elias. Elias and handle the musicians and Miss Gate, you go speak with um, Nathan Kensington. Yes, perfect. Okay. So that means I have to go. <laughs> oh, no. So I think I've created a new trait for my character. Okay. Through this, where I'm going to call it, I don't know if this is something you can do, I'm just doing it. Mm -hmm. um, it's called Brave, where it means that I am not intimidated by problems or authority and I will speak up for myself. But obviously the negative side of that is I can often speak out of turn and be not quite proper. Okay. I wonder who that reminds me of. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I'm, I'm not a Gryffindor at all. Pedantic historical sidebar. I believe that the supper comes after the dance. Just okay. so I know that's the order of the typical order of the day. Dancing, supper. So supper. we're That's always the bad is when they say things. We'll have, she, she will spend less time preparing food for the household. The days before. The day before. Oh. Or like all the days before, basically. I see. So she can spend more time um, on the preparations for. Although I will admit that it's always confused me because dinner and supper are two different things. Yes. Right? Yeah. Supper is the later meal. Like the formal sit down. Um, the way that you guys did that, I think, was correct. Mm -hmm. How it would be a cold supper leading right. up to. Yeah, yeah, that was good. Thank you, Downton Abbey. Yeah, good uh -huh. job. Nice. I'm definitely getting echoes of doubt. It's like 100 years um, off, but it works. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So the day three is dawned. You young ladies are, are hard at work once again. Um, what would you like to do first among this list of three things? The rehearsal with musicians, when will that be happening? Calling on Mr. Ashworth and talking to Lady Kensington. Like, are you all doing them simultaneously? I thought they would probably handle, the musicians are not gonna show up early. True. Lady Kensington they, also is probably not an early riser. Yeah, probably not. And you don't wanna hang out, go over to the Ashworth's home right when they 
Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. So I think all of these things would kind of happen like midday. -ish. All right. right. That makes sense. So it's around that time. Uh, why don't we start with uh, Anne? Uh, and you and Miss Ashworth uh, <laughs> go together. Mm -hmm. It's, yep. such, it's yep. such a lovely day. Yep, it's a you, beautiful day. You just, Miss Ashworth <laughs> insists, insists that you take a long, lovely stroll to her father's estate and chatters all the way about every little thing she sees. <laughs> and aren't you all just bosom friends? Um, I need to do a roll. <laughs> If I do something very much, very much against etiquette, where I basically tell her to shut the hell up, <laughs> um, and I want to make it a roll because I'm honestly not sure. Okay. What I would do, and I guess if I fail, that would be an embarrassment, right? Because I will have be shamed. So who really cares? Mm. But I'm gonna make it a roll. I don't know. Yeah. What is this gonna? I don't know if I don't think it's a straight roll. I think I don't think it's anything. It's a straight roll. It's like I cannot. Yes, I'm really okay. In case it's not clear, I'm really upset by this. Like, <laughs> this fall has to happen, mm -hmm. and this now is a huge stumbling block. So mm -hmm. I am just like gonna lose it. Maybe mm -hmm. we'll see. <laughs> it's a four. So I guess the the success is I don't. Yeah, you don't lose your ish with Miss Ashwood, but uh, <laughs> probably you for the best. You managed to convince her that you uh, would like to enjoy the sounds of nature. No, okay, that's good. In silence. It's very oh, nice. diplomatic. Uh, you arrive at her house. She's she's basically vibrating with not having talked for 10 minutes straight. But let's say that <laughs> when I look at my hands, I realize there are half moon <laughs> marks on my palms from where I <laughs> dug my fingernails into my palms very good. from not yelling at her. And so you uh, proceed into the uh, to the Ashford Estate. She makes herself quite at home. She says, "Oh, come, come straight into Father's study. He doesn't mind." <laughs> she brings herself into the divan. Father, I made a friend. <laughs> a, an old, grim-looking figure turns slowly around from his desk and glares at you silently. Uh, Miss Ashworth has clearly addressed him as father, so this must be Mr. Mm -hmm. Ashworth. <laughs> um, and he he's hunched over some papers on his desk and he looks very unwelcoming. He's like, who is this? Who are you? Uh, I bob a curtsy. Mm -hmm. Mr. Ashworth, I speak to you of a very important matter to do with your upcoming dinner party. Uh, dinner parties are hardly important, but go ahead. Well, I couldn't agree more. <laughs> <laughs> um, let us say there was a large mix-up centering around your daughter in terms of the dates of the annual upcoming Kensington Ball. What? Yes, I know of it. Unfortunately, you've scheduled your dinner party on the same night, and Miss Ashworth here... Glare. <laughs> Despite filling out the invitations for everyone to come to the ball, failed to inform us. I know. I don't want to go to a stupid ball. <laughs> well, sir, I understand completely, but I would hope that you would see that it would be somewhat inconvenient for you to schedule a gathering at your home the same night as your, I guess you mean, if they're the big wealthy landowners around. But he has his own estate. Yeah to schedule your gathering for the same I don't season. see what this has to do with me, young mm -hmm. lady. You have to go roll some. Okay. Um, do you want me to roll first and then respond? Roll. Respond and tell me what, you know, attribute or, I mean, trait or accomplishment you're employing. Okay. Let's turn on the charm. You have to excuse me. Sorry. Let's turn on the charm so I can get a plus one. I don't think I can really use my accomplished dancing. I do a jig. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm going to turn on the charm and I'm going to say, Mr. Ashworth, please, I beg you to come to the party and has sent me here as her emissary. Please, I beg you, please consider rescheduling your gathering. There are so many people who are depending upon this ball for so many reasons. It's vital that it happen and happen as planned. I rolled a one. So a one plus one is a two. <laughs> Yeah, do you want to spend a good grace? I don't have any. Oh. Let me see. Have you earned a good grace just yet? Uh, let's see. I did. You did have one failure, and I did. 
tap one of your trades bad. So I will say you do have a grace. Do you want to spend it right now? Yes. And okay. so that makes me a four. Mm -hmm. And I look aside, shoot a glance at Miss Ashworth. And I, as you have been in the company of your daughter these 18 years, it probably does not surprise you that this scheduling error, we are doing our best to rectify it. Okay. I get the feeling he doesn't really suffer his dog. All gruff and like, he's not really known for that. He was gruff towards you. All right. So you say this and at first he seems like, you know, kind of like, uh, yeah, I guess that's true. But then you start talking about his daughter and he's just like, my Amelia may be a little idiot, but she is my little idiot. And Mr. Ashworth, when I say that many people, Miss Ashworth is certainly one of the ring too. She's been working so hard. In fact, we placed her in charge of doing all of the invitations she did beautifully. It would be a shame for all of her hard work now to be. We look at her and she has this pleading, <laughs> dull-eyed look. Please, father. All right. So you're bringing Miss Ashworth, in, Ashworth into it. She does honestly believe that you are her friend. So she is going to try to help you. Okay. I'm going to say she's going to roll and see how that goes. Off the table. Off the table. I'm going to give her a plus one because she also has the characteristic of charming. Everyone in this group is so charming. She says, not me. me. Yeah. I'm so gothic and tragic. <laughs> Please, Father, I'm so sorry for all the confusion, but I do want to go to the ball. Please, please let it happen. You're so wonderful. We can definitely do the dinner party some other night. And you don't have to come to the ball at all. I'll tell everyone you've got the gout. <laughs> <laughs> Dysentery. <laughs> um, he kind of laughs at her a little bit. And he says, all right, all right, all right. Uh, I'll have my man uh, tell all the families we've invited that we will reschedule it due to a small error uh, if it will make you happy, Puppet, he says to Amelia. Just, oh, it makes me so happy, Father. And she flings her arms around his hunched shoulders. Uh, finally... Finally, a hug lands and everyone's happy. Yeah. Oh and Miss Ashworth just wanted a hug this whole damn time. Thank you, Mr. Ashworth. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, yes, yes. He pats he pats his daughter on the shoulder to let go. He's like, off with you, ladies. Now off with you. And he goes back to his pictures. And he's, he says, oh, Amelia Puppet, uh, speak to Hollingsworth on your way out. Thank you. Miss um, Ashworth uh, flits about uh, to find the butler. Um, and tells him of the change of plans. Uh, he seems slightly put out, but of course agrees. Yay! Yay. Oh, thank God. <laughs> All right. I was really nervous, you guys. Resolute. Uh, if I blew this, we were in trouble. Yeah. So, Miss... Uh, Miss Fight. Fight. Yes. Yes. Uh, you have been waiting around Trowbridge, uh, and finally, around mid-morning... The Lady Kensington descends from her rooms uh, and declares herself fit enough to take 10 to 12 minutes of air and, and plans to, to take a walk about the gardens. Lady Kensington, would it be all right if I joined you? I have a, a small matter to discuss with you. Oh, I'm sure it would be delightful, my dear. And, and, and my, my, uh, my dear maid, uh, I'm running out of names, Stephanie. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's probably not a good region, Charlotte. No. My dear Charlotte here would no doubt uh, appreciate a, a small break. So off you go, Charlotte, dear. Uh, and, and she puts a, a, a slightly frail hand on your arm uh, and you walk about the gardens. Yes. Um, at first, the discussion is about the floral and the fauna that we see about us. But then I approach a very sensitive subject about the meals for today. And I mentioned that your cook is, I mean, Lady Kensington, your cook is eager to please you on the night of the ball. And so in order to allow her to have her full attention on the food preparations, she, we have suggested together that perhaps 
some cold supper would be in order for us today so that we can make sure that this ball is as grand as could be. Um, and I said, I would let you know and make sure that was all right. All right. So uh, I'm going to say that this is, again, something that you have to do. You're forthright, but uh, Lady Kensington actually is also forthright. Okay. So she appreciates you just telling her how it is. Uh, you can roll with a plus one to get her to agree to this cold supper idea. Go, Priya. Two. Two total? No, three total. Three total. Uh, you don't have any more. Do you have any graces? Yeah, you gave me a new one. Okay. Do you want to use it now or do you Yeah, wanna... we should just use it. We're at the end game. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Use it. Uh, so yeah. The so, stakes couldn't be higher. <laughs> <laughs> Cold uh, supper. <laughs> at first, Lady Kensington is hesitant. She's like, oh, I, I don't remember what my doctor said about my meals. Mm, perhaps a cold supper would not be quite as nourishing as he would like it. Mm -hmm. Oh, but then again, we only do the bowl once a year. Hmm. Hmm. She's really on the fence. Is there anything you can say just like to push her over? Um, Lady Kensington, I do think occasionally in the heat such as this, okay. that perhaps a cold supper would be good for your health because it, it allows, as you know, the latest medical information says that hot food calms the blood, I mean, increases the blood flow and causes weakness in the bones. So perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. Sure. That's all them. Okay. Uh, she's like, oh, well, quite right, quite right. Well, I suppose that we should at least give it a try. And and she 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 readily agrees to a cold supper. You all spend the rest of the walk, well, at least some portion of the walk, discussing what options would probably be best for good spleen balance or whatever humors or whatever. <laughs> yeah. papers um, and then before before we head back inside i i asked her gently um lady kensington your niece told me that you spent some time in the south of france oh n let's say i'm eight, 17 how old would you say i am 17 18 19 yeah, yeah. They told some We're not yet 18 and a half <laughs> years ago um and i was wondering what was your favorite part of that trip Oh, well, I, I was actually quite ill and, and spent most of the trip confined. So I'm afraid that I did not enjoy the, the south of France as I should have at that juncture. But I, at a later date, I, I find it quite refreshing to be there in the wintertime. And she, she goes into a bit of a story about uh, her travels. Okay, and, and then just to close out, I say, oh, Sir Anglebrook, as you know, I am an orphan and the word of Sir Engelbrook. And he said that he found me in an orphanage in the south of France. And, and I wanted to know more about my origins and thought you might be able to tell me more about the area. So, breadcrumb. So, Priya, <laughs> do you want her to be your mom or do you not care? Or I think I want, because I think she knows that I am... Lord Engelbrook's war because I'm her daughter. Okay. So, she, she yeah, I think she knows. So because of the she, she is your mom. Yeah, but she can't outwardly acknowledge it because technically I am a bastard, right? So I just want acknowledgement. I don't want money. I don't want anything. I just want acknowledgement. But she doesn't know that you don't want right. money. Right. Yeah, she doesn't know that I don't want money. Because so, I, so, she, so she would say, were I an orphan... I might not wish to learn of my antecedents, for perhaps therein lies tragedy. You know that I believe in great literature and great love stories and great drama, Lady Kensington. But I feel like this is one gaping hole in my heart that I must have assuaged. Um, obviously, Lord Engelbrook has been a great uncle to me and has supported me and raised me with great aplomb. I don't even know if that's the right word. But knowing who my, my parents were would bring me such joy, especially if I have some siblings as well. 
So oh, let's go. Yeah. I see what you did there. It's like I'm not threatening the position of your kids. Yeah. I just <laughs> flung my pencil across the room. I was so excited. <laughs> <laughs> So you are being a little bit gothic right now. I'm going to say roll with a minus one, but I am going to give you credit for having a bad trait. Totally into this. Right? Okay. Let's. Oh my God. One. Mm. This dice really hates me. It's because Kristen rolled all those sixes earlier. <laughs> so Do you have a grace point. You should spend it. She's already spent it. Oh. But didn't she get another one? She did. She's that's the one she spent. Ah. Kristen, don't go to the bathroom. You're missing important Sorry, plot points. I had to go to the bathroom. You're missing all the important plot points. What do you want me to do? I had to go to the Just sit here like any reasonable girl would and hold that. <laughs> that wouldn't. Uh, anyway, um, Lady Kensington, she, she obviously understands what you are Im intimating here. She, she gets it. But she's a little bit wary because she doesn't want to do anything that might compromise, you know, her son's fortunes and standings or her own reputation. Mm -hmm. Right. So she's definitely not going to open up at this juncture. She tells you, oh, oh, my dear, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling a bit faint. Uh, perhaps you would mind uh, not uh, leaving me here on this bench and and running quickly and fetching uh, my maid, my maid Charlotte, uh, for me. I I feel that I must return to my rooms immediately. Crestfallen, makes a yeah. request, but not really a request. Yeah. So crestfallen, I bob my head in curtsy and I run and get Charlotte, mm -hmm. and and enter the room where Miss Popola has just returned from her her, her errand. Crestfallen. Oh. So, you know, it's, it's, you know, Maybe. it failed this time. I'm going to say that you took uh, a mental embarrassment for that because you were so sure she was going to open up. And now this is going to be on your mind, just like worrying in the back of your mind. Like she knows that I know. And what is she going to think of me? And what, what, how is that going to affect our relationship going forward? It's taking up some of your headspace. So, Going forward, you might be distracted by that, mm -hmm. and and ha and have some trouble with some of your roles. Okay, oh, I think we're getting on in time. Would this be like the return of the uh, the Empire Strikes Back low moment for <laughs> one of our heroines <laughs> to pause on and then pick up the game? Yeah, because I would like to continue. Yeah, with me this. too. And yeah. we don't have to be in the same room. Obviously, I mean, we got Priya calling it. We could all call in and do it i think it's really yeah. there's so many dangling plot points yeah <laughs> do, do we want to at least do one more scene if we probably have time for one more scene maybe with the musicians and then we'll close out day three and then we'll have a couple more day we can put in like oh you have one or two more days before the ball okay so you enter the ballroom space. Um, it is largely unused in the time when they're not hosting lavish parties. So much of the furniture is covered with dust cloths. Um, Lord Elias Kensington is already there. Uh, and uh, he looks at you and he seems a bit flustered. There's the social embarrassment lay oh, hanging right. between you about your relationship with James Frazier. That's right. Um, do you say anything to him before the musicians arrive or do you just wait silently? I, um, know about this embarrassment and I certainly feel abashed. So I simply acknowledge his presence with a, <coughs> I'm Miss Andwart. How, playing a little do? bit hard to get, playing it cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. makes the men crazy. <laughs> uh, the musicians are announced by Mr. Collins with a <laughs> sneer on his face. <laughs> Uh, they stumble in, still smelling of hayloft and sour beer. <laughs> oh, delightful. Not there. Uh, Lord Elias Kensington casts a very skeptical look your way, Miss mm. Sandwright. Sir, I know they do not appear to be the most attractive troop, but I think with your in-depth um, great knowledge, you will immediately recognize Okay, so what are you gonna to roll to try to convince him of that or just let the musicians play? Yes, I will roll to try to convince him to let the musicians play. Okay. Because he clearly wants to cast them out of yes. his house in disgust. Do I have any I have points prep charming points? 
Uh, you can try. Charming's not going to work on him because of the social embarrassment. Oh. What else do you have? Oh, it's just compassionate. You're so nice, though. And I have a music, so I get it plus one. Oh, you, you get, get plus two. You get plus two for the musical part. So you get you get the plus two, but nothing my, else. My accomplishment isn't very useful until the actual ball. Purely <laughs> dancing. I'm going to dance my way out of this one. <laughs> Doesn't count. No roll. Okay. No roll. Four. Ooh. All right. All right. Four. So uh, you do manage to sway him. You know, he's like, oh, perhaps, perhaps appearances. Can be deceiving. <laughs> I would at least <laughs> hear them play. Uh, and uh, the the lead musician uh, kind of scratches behind his ear and says, <laughs> "What do you have, Miss?" <laughs> <laughs> and with a coy glance towards Lord, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that old Trump! <laughs> One, two, three, four, and they launch into it. <laughs> Um, with the better acoustics of the ballroom, it is actually quite good. Um, until the, I'm going to say, bass player sure. misses a note, uh, and they all start cracking up. <laughs> oh, no. That's very unprofessional. It is very unprofessional. What are you going to say to them? Stop. Oh, good <laughs> sirs, we expect the very best in your performance and your prosum. And I, for one, am quite disappointed to hear, to see that you are not interested in earning your bread from us. Especially the amount. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, so are you going to try to... Uh, so that's pretty... Um, that's not really tapping any of your traits. Do you want to add a new trait? Like add, I don't know what would work here. Compassion would compel me to like let them, mm -hmm. but. Uh, oh, what if mm, witty? Oh. Or maybe you could come up with like a, um, etiquette is an accomplishment, but maybe we could do a trait for like convincing. Like she can be uh, give like, like a really, oratory, or like she can inspire people Rhetorical. to act to their best. Yeah. You know what I mean? Okay. Okay. So, so maybe I rally the truce with my new real prowess. Yeah. But well, it's like put, people want your people down, pleaser. People want to please you, right? Like, okay. oh, gentlemen. Well, let's put down rhetoric. So you know how to talk to a crowd mm -hmm. is the plus. Uh, the downside is that sometimes you come off as smarmy and political. Oh, manipulative. She should hang out with your friends. Yeah. <laughs> the Weasley guy. <laughs> Rude. Algernon. <laughs> Algernon. Algernon. Okay. Everyone named Algernon. So it's lovely. That is your new trait from now and forever. Okay. Uh, roll and add one. Five. Ah, nice. So you got a total of six. Uh, the, the musicians uh, appear uh, appropriately chastised. <laughs> uh, you know, did you roll the, another six, five, oh. and then added one for the rhetorical? So, the she, thing so uh, they they kind of you know, like come on, nudge each other, it's like come on, lads. They kind of like slick down their hair, adjust their oh, clothes nice. a little bit, you know, brush off the hay and whatnot. <laughs> they start again from the top, and they uh, they execute the musical number with uh, with precision uh, and uh, convince uh, Lord Kensington. To fork over the, the the upfront payment. I look over to Lord Kensington. Um, perhaps uh, any young lady would have. Oh, that's being pretty uh, presumptuous. <laughs> pretty pretty out there. Um, let's, uh, I guess you could try charming. And um, let me see. What is a so what does a social embarrassment really do? You take a minus one penalty to those rules. So. With your charmingness, the social bed with cancels out. It's a flat roll. Oh my God, what's gonna happen? Yes. I'm way invested in it. Oh <laughs> my God. Oh, he yes. just like drops his trowel right here. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. It says I'm charming, um, but I'm not that charming. Wait, what did you get? You. So, uh, <laughs> you get a five so she got a five. She got a five. Oh, hi. So at first, he seems taken aback, but then he uh, he blushes mightily <laughs> and he mumbles something to you about perhaps he might have the honor of reserving the two dances. Sweet, <laughs> you're closer nice. and closer. Okay, well that's a high point. To yeah, end yeah, on. that's, that's good. good. High point that's right. Um, so uh, this was a very busy day for all the ladies, uh, and so you all elect to uh, retire early. Um, to bed. To bed. 
some smelling salts <laughs> on the next first impressions podcast <laughs> will the ball go off without a hitch will miss gate find out about her parent will what's my character's name will miss popplewell have get her perfect ball and maybe meet a gen mm-hmm. and will miss sandright decide between her two fellows <laughs> tune in next time <laughs> okay but big thanks to selby yes, obviously selby, for all so the hard lovely. work oh big thanks to priya for joining us yes. yeah I felt actually, I've been sitting here between like two authors and an experienced game. I felt like I was, um, you guys it. blew it you out of the water. It was awesome. It. Oh yeah. no, I'm so involved in your stories. Now. <laughs> <laughs> now I have to like go do fan art about um, the set right and Elias <laughs> and some kind of gothic tribute. Yeah. yeah. Oh, hey, don't forget, we have to figure out the decoration still. Yes, actually, ooh, um, I'm gonna, I wrote this down, but I had an idea. Miss Popplewell had an idea on the walk back. Um, because we're going to have like in musicians, kind of rougher music and simple dinner fare. What if we present the first ball with a theme <laughs> and the theme because, um, under the sea, no, <laughs> in Tamman, under the sea. no, what if the theme was just like a country dance and we double oh, down yeah, on double the down kind on of it. fun, um, crazier night out aspect of the ball be a good idea perhaps yeah so then people will know what to expect yeah yeah okay and hopefully next time denby will show up we'll have more lawrence Mm -hmm. yeah lawrence we have a lot of stuff to do those men yeah Yeah. whatever we don't need them no we kind of do them (laughs) (laughs) all right right. so next time the you guys are going to work on the decorations in the theme of a country dance you might run into Lawrence Kensington and Lord Denby. Is that is that what I heard as yes. your desires for next the next day? Yes. Anything else? Uh, we do need to figure out the decorations, so we're going to have to get with the staff about. And that. then I saw the outstanding mother problem. Yes, we have to figure out how to get um, Lady Kensington. She's your mother. Ooh. <laughs> Okay, yeah. well, thank you, ladies, for joining us. It was yeah. so fun. I can't wait to see how it ends. I, I, thanks so much for having me do this. It was so fun. You were so great. Yeah, thank you so good. much. You were awesome. Yeah. Well, I you may have to see to maybe do this heard. more. So I told Sylvie once that the danger is that I would get sucked into something else that I shouldn't get sucked into. But this was so well, great. It so. should only be like a, another session, and we yeah. should be able to wrap it up. But I would yeah. never have guessed that you guys have never – role played before. It's yeah. clearly like your author imagination <laughs> served mm-hmm. very well. Very cool. Okay. Well you guys have fun karaoke. Okay, I feel better. I hope-